RadioBus.com now presents Facebook Live. Attention drag racers, listen up. World Championship racer Bucky Austin man behind Bucky Austin Racing. Put you in race car of your dreams, funny car specialist, and more. We do it all. Chassis work, complete engine build, body mount, full dyno work. If you want to go fast, this is the place. Bucky Austin Racing has what it takes to help you be a winner. Just look at the Austin family name, a winner throughout. Contact Bucky today and start winning. Bucky Austin Racing, 6201 South Tacoma Way, Tacoma, Washington, 253-475-5026. Sponsored by Bucky's Racing. Thank you for visiting purehot.com. My family and friends help me with the water heater boosters. you can't refuse then you need the new nitro mafia racing apparel you can get it here at nitromafiaracing.com t-shirts sweatshirts caps and mugs and plenty of other swag to find out the latest happenings from the crew as well from the godfather himself don bobby underboss scotty c and council the area lisa kubo hey do you want a fresh one well listen up then make your bones by picking up your nitro mafia racing apparel here at nitromafiaracing.com and when they make a hit at your local racetrack now that's an offer you can't refuse. Hey, forget about it. NitroMafiaRacing.com Oh yeah, this is Rockin' Racing with Joe Walla. What would it be? I don't know if we're What's going up? I don't see us on the screen. Are we on the screen? I don't see us yet either. Oh yeah, this is Rockin' and Raisin' with Joe Walla. What's happening? What's happening? Are we live yet? Is anybody out there? You see me? Anybody see we us We should out there? be live. It says we're live. And last time I thought we weren't live. I know, you were swearing up a storm. Anybody see me out there? Because uh, my, it's sounding like a sign. damn sailor. Anybody see me on the All screen? All right, let's see if... Uh, so tonight is a very special night. We want to thank some of our sponsors while we're getting things uh, keyed up here. Nitro Mafia Racing. Check them out. My, NitroMafiaRacing.com. Also, PureHot.com. And sponsored by Bucky's Racing. Hey, do you know if Bucky's Racing had a website? I couldn't find them online. Well, Bucky's pretty much got his thing going on only on his on his uh, phone number. So nice. Bucky's kind of an old school kind of guy. So, he but you can find him on Facebook. Yeah, but you can go to Bucky's.com. They have an actual Bucky's.com for the store, not Bucky Austin Racing though. Nice. So Bucky's, we do double duty with both of the stores and Bucky Austin Racing. So. And the same thing with Antec Oil and Nitro Mafia. So just in case. Is anybody getting the video? Does anybody see the video I don't, yet? I don't see a video on, our, on my screen. I'm not on seeing a video. I see uh, Sammy says got it, but. Uh, we got it. We're having some technical difficulties like normal. 
Ah. Well, don't assume the worst because we're actually live on Radio Roy's Buzz. Yeah, Roy's got it. Sammy's ways. got it. So, Phil, do you yeah. see us out there? And then uh, I gotta get that hair out of your face, son. Hippie. Yeah, yeah, damn yeah, hippie. hippie. Damn hippie. All right. So we got we're... a pretty cool show going on. Yes, you're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're not, good. Just not on my phone. I guess uh, my phone hates. Uh, well, it's because you have a Mac. I don't have a Mac. I don't have nothing. I got a. I got a brand new phone. It doesn't even show us. Oh. Well, I guess it, it isn't meant to show sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's just, we're radio. 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 So we do you a can... lot of hand motion tonight. You know, I, I sent you that picture. Yep, for I the, see you. Yeah, you see me? Yep. Oh, yep, I see you. That's scary. Nice. Something. Can so, you hear me? I, apparently they can because they just responded to what you <laughs> said. <laughs> it's a lot of hand motion. We've got Amadeus here. Amadeus. So, uh, great. So we'll see what's happening. i got Jim yeah. Kretz coming on tonight. So it's going to be a good conversation with Jim. Nice. Uh, he's uh, with the Joker's Wild, uh, uh, Double A Fuel Altered. I got uh, Jim Black calling in. He's the, the master of track prep of all the uh, 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 Famosa drag strip, and he got the. Uh, they he does the, stuff. Well, he he makes the track <laughs> he makes the track work for these guys who uh, want to run nitro methane cars and all the other cars. So nice. Uh, he went up to Spokane at Seattle with us, so we're going to have some stories to tell. And so we got two gyms and a dentist tonight. That's right, Dennis. Uh, Dennis Taylor. Dennis Taylor actually has his uh, evil, wicked, mean, and nasty uh, Mustang nice nostalgia funny car, and he's also part of a. Uh, you know, he is. He's the man behind Taylor Motorsports. Yeah, go. Let me stutter. Stutter and pick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just stop. But it's going to be cool to talk to all these cats tonight, you know. <laughs> I found sound effects. Oh, jeez. I'm going to start doing this. Here, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. You're going to kill me with this. You know that. You know, this is what Chris will do to me. He's do it all <laughs> this is great. Oh, man. I know. I it's going to be win. fun. Hey, Karen, there is no emojis working tonight. I am so sorry. So oh, I'm is just doing emojis. Yeah, I'm just going to assume that's a heart. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. Great. I'm going to see if I, I still haven't got myself on my own phone, so there's something wrong here. I'm not seeing my phone. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on my phone, but everybody else is apparently seeing hey, it. Hey, Gary Spears, what's up, Angela? Hey, Sammy, Angela. it was good to see you up in Spokane, brother. That was cool. Uh, wish we would have got the jam. Next time we uh, get out that way, we'll definitely do some stuff. I think I'm going to be on a little hiatus for a while with the rock and roll for a few more weeks or so. And high on your hiatus? High on my hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to take a step back, man. I've been running like a mad dog since I came back, and I've been working like a crazy mother. So I'm trying to find us some new sponsors. I got some potentially crazy sponsors. Plus, uh, Hopefully that'll uh, start going into effect. So. Yeah, thank you. I finally did something with my life. Got a little <laughs> work in there. <laughs> I got next week, just so to let you know, I, I've been talking to Ron Cook again of uh, Thrust, you know, and they released a new album, and uh, we're going to have them come in the studio next nice. week. So if he doesn't show up this time, I, I, I keep uh, bugging him, and I forgot to give him some info. So. Yeah, that, thank you. That would that would be it, you that know. That would be it. But <laughs> got a few more things. I got to start lining up some shows. So all the guys, I'm sorry, I, I hassled them all at the last minute to say, "Hey, get on the show tonight." Uh, uh, this is what happens when I start in, in work mode again. So once I was at work, it's like th I got to make money. So I got to right. pay for that uh, adventure that we just came off of. So uh, you know, we'll be taking some calls tonight. We'll have some free time to catch up with some of our probably fans. Turn that on, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Hey, could give us a buzz and see what's happening tonight. But uh, in a few minutes, I got Jim Kretz calling up. It's a high hey. five. Thank you, Karen. And uh, I saw that. Uh, yeah, thanks for the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot there, Teresa. Looking good. No, it's just the lighting, not the lightning. <laughs> the lightning. <laughs> I should have got struck with it three or four times. The, the, the lightning applause. You did get electrocuted, though, on your music video that I made you for you. Oh, great. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> did you see that? Yeah, I got zapped by lightning, I believe. <laughs> That's the... I'll just read comments while I'm here. I don't know what the heck's going on with this, but, you know. Yeah, there you go. It's looking good, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Let me turn this All right, this phone so why so. is this not working on our – is it our Internet here? Well, you didn't, pay the, you didn't pay the bill this month, or we? Well, that's no. why we need sponsors, folks. The yeah. internet they can get paid, <laughs> but we could broadcast, but we can't get in. Yeah. Hey, is the phones on at least? We can get out. We just can't get in. Yeah, that's a story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, that's what they say: get out. 
You're not coming in. <laughs> Get for, out. You're not coming back in. Saying, exactly. Thanks a lot, Joe. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, there's we one. Oh, we know the phones are working now. How come it's ringing on the wrong phone? Oh, there we go. There you go. Are we in? Oh, man. Let me in. Oh, you, Let you, me you, in. You, you're batting a 1,000 tonight. Should be in. Hey, Radio. you're live on Radio Buzz. Who we got? Hello, hello. Hello, this is Jim Grant. Hey, hey, Jim. Hey, what's yeah, look at that. It worked. Hey, it worked. We, we're having all kinds of oh, weird things nice. on our end tonight. You know, I think How it's good. How you doing tonight? We're doing, we're doing, doing kind of whack. <laughs> now. <laughs> I think we're doing a little whack. I think what happens is that Chris does all this crazy stuff throughout the week when I'm gone, and he pulls new stuff, and uh -huh. he's like, do we test it? I'll wait till Joe gets here. <laughs> Just wait till Joe gets here. <laughs> so we're, every week, it's a, you can tell we got a new background in the set. <laughs> Last week, it was Dots. So we'll play and connect the dots. Yeah, you know, I thought I'd make it, uh, you know, a little better. Oh, it says Chris is louder than you need to be turned up, Joe. Well, it's about time. Normally, I'm too loud. I know, right? That's the story of my life. So what's going on, Mr. Kretz? Not much. I just want to throw a, a hoot out there for Sonoma Raceway coming up to the 31st Toyota Sonoma Nationals. Uh, and they got that Cackle Fest a national get-together right. on the 27th through the 29th. There's going to be... Uh, 30 vintage uh, top fuel cars there, firing them up in front of the grandstands like last year. When, they, when, when, they, when are they going to do that? At, at uh, Saturday night or are they going to do it Friday? Fr fr Friday night. Ah. Uh, when the lights, when the, I know, when the, the drag racers can't see the Christmas tree around 7, 720. Right. After the uh, street outlaws go through, then uh, we come out in front out there and make some noise and uh, please the crowd until they can see again. So the they can finish qualifying. Yeah, there you go. So I know you guys are going to be uh, in the uh, garages out there on Saturday and Sunday, correct? Yeah, Sabrina's got it all set up. Um, she's got all the cars ready to go in there. We'll put our cars in on her on Thursday morning. We'll get the cars in for the big guys to get there. Get them all set up for the people, the spectators to come through, look at the cars, touch them, take some pictures, and look at some uh, old nostalgia cars and top fuel cars and a lot of history there. I, I am heading up that way. I'll be there Saturday morning for sure, and I, w I won't miss the Cackle Fest. But if you guys are listening, Sonoma Nationals, definitely get there early uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Racing this Racing. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I know. But, you know, you, you, Jim, you gave me some news that I, I was all excited about this morning when we talked on the phone briefly about uh, buying one of my buddy's cars. So talk about it. You know, if you guys don't know, real quick before I start. Uh, if you guys don't know Jim Kretz, he has the Joker's Wild Top Fuel Double uh, uh, A altered. So this is a wild Fiat. It's a Fiat Topolino, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, I just wanted to give you the, the proper introduction instead of just babbling, so that people know who you are. So, and uh, <laughs> tell me what you picked up. Tell the people today, because I was excited when I heard it. Well, I was uh, searching the internet like most people do, and I. I've been looking for uh, a front motor dragster because I sold mine last year. And so I'm looking hard, and I found one, and I called the guy up, and we made a deal. And I got a 1969 Ron Dixon made the chassis, but the guy that he made it for was 240 Gordy. How for cool his is first that? junior fuel car in 1969. Wow, how cool is that, huh? Yeah, it's a beautiful car, and the color of the car still got the same colors when Gordy had it. Right, and the car was is still being raced. It's just racing in uh, different classes now, and uh, my goal is to put it back like it was. Right, keep the history going on it. Yep, yep. It's a beautiful car. Um, it's uh, it's got the same wheels on it that when Gordy had it, front and back. Uh, motors changed though. Uh, it's got a big block uh, injected alcohol in it now, and wow. the guy that has it now is winning, still winning with it. He's number one in the points with that car in uh, utah wow so when do you take so, possession of this monster october 4th he's gonna drive halfway and i'm driving halfway five hours each way and <laughs> we'll switch vehicles and head back home wow that's that's gonna be great i'd love to see some pictures when you get them post them up and uh, we'll share them on one of the shows for sure so tell i'd like to have it uh, our goal is to get it ready for the hot rod reunion bring the joker and that car both there right so I think think we can do it. Well, hopefully, so. I love to see I love to see the that that car is beautiful car, the Joker's wild car. If you haven't seen it yet, well, I know Chris will post a few pictures because we did put a few up. So, 
sh share a share a picture or two because I thought the car was wild looking. I love the paint job you did on it. Yeah, give me well, a second. Thank you, Lit. Well, uh, all tuned up by Ronnie Hampshire, the NHRA Hall of Famer. He's uh, got it all tuned. Uh, since we were at uh, Laguna Seca, we changed the hat on it, took off the Hillborns, and put on Enderley. And he's got this thing cracking hard. So we're ready. I polished those Hillborn wheels last night for three hours. I go, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> those no, magnesium wheels, just, <laughs> you got to love them. No Dremel tool, huh? All by hand? Yeah, I've just. Uh, I use one of those mother balls on it, but it breaks up so fast. Every time I go through them, you pay twenty nine dollars for a ball, and it's it's good to work. It works good, but you go in the front spokes are magnesium too, and you, you don't get a, a full polish time that I wear one of those wheels out. So I just do the old labor, get a genuine draft beer, and start <laughs> rubbing them on. There you go. Get them shining. So so what how how long you been doing stuff with the uh with these uh, with these little toys what we you know some of these guys will say they're just toys but I mean I, these racing machines how how many years you been involved in the uh, sports Well in 1970 um I brought home a 64 Nova and I cut it up and made a sea gas tra uh, uh, see gas car out of it. And my dad goes, that car's only six years old, seven years old. Why are you cutting that nice car up? <laughs> I threw the front end away, put a straight axle on it, fiberglass front end, and I went racing. And uh, I raced all through my life. And, and then I got hooked into junior fuel. I drove for uh, uh, they'll call the Black Monday. It was a junior fueler. The guy out of Fresno asked me to drive for him, so I did. I did that for a few years, and I thought I was really, really good. So I said, I'm going to buy my own car. That's a mistake. Always drive somebody else's. It's cheaper and easier. So <laughs> I bought the Fatal Attraction uh, Junior Fueler. And I raced that for three or four years until I went upside down at Sears Point. And then wow. that put a, a halt on everything <laughs> for a while. Went, uh, went upside down, hit the wall, tore the car in half. I wasn't hurt. My pride was. My pocketbook, more or less, a right? <laughs> yeah, pocketbook hurt a lot. <laughs> oh, man. That's, so you, you, that was the end of driving? Uh, for that. And then um, we put the car back together, and we went out and test-tuned it for a while. And then I said, oh, you know what, family started to come through and, um, and houses. And, then, you know, it's, you, you got to pick what you're going to do. So after all those years, I got back into what my friends are doing these cackle fests, and, and they go, oh, get back into this. And I'm going, Okay, it can't be that much money. Oh, it is. Try to put a nostalgia car back together with all vintage correct parts. It's expensive. Oh yeah, I didn't think any um, of that was going to be cheap at all. Because I see, I see, <laughs> I see these guys, and I just saw my buddy Bet, uh, Brett Crane at, up in uh, Sp uh, Seattle. I didn't actually would see because I was playing music on the other side of the thing. But those guys, uh, he blew up a blower off of those off of that uh, dragster he had. So I know that just even cackling, you know, you can't take this stuff lightly when you guys start those motors up. I just learned something very valuable watching some of these guys. And I just saw a picture of somebody that blew up uh, uh, one of the motors grenaded, on the, I guess, on the uh, cackle, too. So you never know. Well, you just, you know, you, you put your time and effort and you listen to people and you make sure the clearances are right, make sure your fuel's mixed correctly. It's always a learning game. But uh, I'm being taught by one of the, you know, Ronnie Hampshire. He's uh, one of the best out there, and, you know, he's just like the best school teacher. Right. He makes you do everything. He watches you. He shows me how to mix the fuel correctly, uh, how to lean it, you know, and uh, make it make sure it runs correctly so nobody does get hurt. And it is a dangerous sport, driving, cackling, or whatever. You just have to take all precautions and do what they say when they say, well, you're done, back the motor off, uh, you know, make sure everything's safe, the magneto, make sure the car's got wheel chocks on it, and uh, kind of have people stay away, stand back with it. I know uh, people get, like to get real close to the smell of the nitro and uh, get close, but, you know, a few more feet back's not going to hurt you. You no, know, you getting too get close same. can. Yeah, you'll get the same effect. Yeah, that's the car, Chris, yeah. that, that monster right there, because Chris has got it on the other picture there, so there you go. We just popped, we just popped the car up for him. Uh, Definitely, that was definitely a wicked-looking machine for sure. 
Joe, when you were down in Laguna Seca, were you there when we all fired up at the same time? All those capital cars. Oh yeah, and the Ring of Fire they called it. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I have to say that was pretty pretty wild. It took it took all the oxygen out of the air. Nobody could breathe. It was so loud. <laughs> and Cindy Gibbs and uh, those guys really did a good job putting that on. Um, that was a great show down there. And uh, for next year, if people want to go, they're going to have us back there next year. Um, Great event at Laguna Seca. A right. lot of entertainment. A lot right. of good cars. Maybe I can twist their arm and tell them we'll come up and play some rock and roll for you guys in between. There, there you go. There Have you a little go. rock and roll and a little cackling and some uh, sports <laughs> car action. That would be awesome. Are you going to play at the Hot Rod Reunion? I haven't figured out yes or no yet because uh, I just got to – I have to actually – uh, send my buddy Mr. Fisher a note and see if I'm allowed to go in and play this year if I can get away with it. So if he says yes, I may go in there and uh, do it. If not, I'm going to go wander around anyway. You know me, I'll be at the track regardless. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. I, I guess I'm a crack, uh, tra track hoe. <laughs> <laughs> track hoe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's, I, I, go to, I can't seem to not, uh, how do you say, uh, stick, stick on the track. I was in the middle of both the on – the, on the pads uh, – launch pads for most of the nitro stuff uh bolt bolt cities uh spokane and uh, uh seattle as well so i was loving life then those for those short moments in time you know mm -hmm. so i see you i see you doing some other stuff i saw that you actually do some like restorations and car restorations and stuff like that is that what your your main uh, sideline yeah, is I, I i have a quite a few uh hobby cars i call them I, uh, it's like a 54 corvette is restored with a 502 ZZ502 700R um, Chris Austin chassis underneath it, it and just I like horsepower and I've got a 41 Willys blown injected on alcohol uh, drag car. Right. It's, it was a vintage drag car out of uh, Seattle wow. and I acquired that about five years ago. It was probably Bucky's dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's got everything uh, up in the Northwest pretty much locked down. It seems. Yeah, well, I got it. it. had a Hemi in it and didn't know much about Hemis, and I said, oh, I'll just take that out and put a big lock in it. Right. I wish I'd have kept that Hemi. <laughs> now, now they're hard to find these parts for Hemis. Uh, it's but, still, uh, I bet you it's still fun to, to mess with these things, though. Oh, yeah. I um, I really enjoy it. I, I got, when I got this Joker's Wild Card, I got it. Is People know him as the NHRA preacher out of L.A. is where I got this car, and uh, – it was a very famous um, fuel altered back in the 60s. Uh, when I got it from him, he had it on race junk, and I went out there and uh, called him up, and he gave me the history of that car, and I had him ship it to me. And I couldn't believe when we started sanding all the, the 20 layers of paint, how many cars, how many people that car went through. One of the doors was the magic muffler car. And wow. the reason these Fiat's a metal, metal body car is the doors would fly open when they go down and hit the rear tire because they're suicide doors. Wow. So one, one door is one color. The other door is a different color from a different car. And in the front nose piece, it looked like the early Burkhalter's first metal body uh, 37 Ford, or a Fiat to top, top Lini. Right. I know those guys, are, they're going racing now. I saw, I saw that they put the car together and uh... – they're looking forward to going down the track a few times, so I'm sure. I haven't I haven't checked with yeah, them lately if they actually got the new one on 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 uh, track yet, so I don't know. I'm, yes, they did. They had Ron Caps test and tuning it for them. I, um, I saw they that. They had a little mishap yeah. with the motor. I saw that in in Bakersfield, but I don't know if they did anything since. That's what I've been waiting to see if they've done something with it. The... When they were at we were at Laguna, he just had the motor in that trailer right there with him. They were putting it back in. But the, the car is painted, and it's ready to rock and roll. And I think they're doing test and tuning now for it. Well, this should be fun. Uh, it should be fun to see that one run. Are you have any? Yeah, we can talk talk to him. He's going to be at Sonoma, so we'll talk to him. Oh, I know. Uh, I figured. Are you are you looking forward to doing anything, or are you just keeping your car as a cackle and showpiece? Well, it's certified for a 750. The frame is, but to do. The only place you can really go and have some fun is like Eagle Field if you want to go out there and just get crazy, do a light up the tires, right. and maybe Kingdom Raceway here. I may do that. Um, it's pretty. I know. I just got to finish breaking the motor in. Then we have three events coming up. We have the Sonoma. We got Kingdom Raceway, 
and then we have uh, the reunion right. and, and Eagle Field the week weekend before. And uh, Eagle Field, bring what you got and go racing, you know. That's kind of what Randy Winkle so, did with uh, Drag Fest this year. Same thing. Bring your car down and just go run it. Where's that at? That was on that. That was a couple of weeks after. It was like April 14th or something like that after uh, the hot rod or uh, the March meet. He had a drag March fest. March meet, okay. Yeah, it was right after that. He did the uh, drag fest, and that was kind of cool. He had a lot of old cars popping up from like Eagle Field guys that race out there. So that might be something for you to check into uh, next year if he if he has it going on. Well, yeah, I I won't. Yeah, the the Gordy car. When I put that back together, that should go together pretty quick. Uh, I have a new bullet ready to put in it when it gets here, so uh, <laughs> it shouldn't take long to fire it up and tune it. Right. Well, I figured that so would that's, be. Uh, well, the Gordy thing. Did you ever meet Gordy by chance when he was alive? Never did. I just remember when he did 240 miles an hour. I rewatched the videos the other day when he did that in his funny car, and that's why they call him 240 40 Gordy. Gordy. Exactly, and uh, I got to meet yeah. him when we when we did a, uh, a race car a few years back when they had the Joe Walla band with the Dan Haran, and he was hanging out in the hospitality tent, so we, me and him started chatting about guitars and cars, and uh, next thing you know, we're talking to each other on the phone uh, a couple of times a week, you know, just saying, hey, what's happening, and uh, he told me some crazy stories about things, and it was always good to have him on the phone call because it felt like, you know, we were best buddies, and I didn't really know too much about him until he started talking. And he was a great guy when he was uh, here, so long live Gordy, man. I, he was one of my buddies. Yeah. And that's a cool piece of history to have right there. Yeah, it really is, and the guy that <clears throat> got it has been taking such good care of it, and all he did was lengthen the car out to 206 inches because <clears throat> when it was uh like all junior fuelers two you know two uh 150 155 uh so that's all it's been done is like you know they lengthen it so they keep the front wheels on the ground right <laughs> but the horse the horsepower they started getting yeah that's that'll be a that'll be a kick to see this thing and i'm looking forward to seeing this thing run when you uh get it in and uh get it in your possession that'll be fun to hang out at one of the track events and see what this this little monster will do for you huh yeah, yep. I'm looking forward to it, and it's uh, it's. It, Gordy must have been a bigger guy, was he? Because the the roll cage and everything is is sized for a six foot person. I don't think he was that big, tall. He wasn't. He he was a little bit smaller than me. I'm I'm six foot, and I think he was probably about five eight, five nine, somewhere around there. I don't think he okay. was that much bigger. I think they might have widened it for him. Yeah. Every time I went to go look for dragsters. I was wondering if a jockey was driving it because I couldn't fit any direction I wanted to buy because back in those days, I guess everybody was small. Because <laughs> I could never find a car that I'd fit in. And that was a, a tough one. And when I found this one, I'm going, wow, it's a perfect fit. Perfect fit, huh? That, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty wild. I just saw somebody post up. I was a Traco. Traco, bro, thanks, Pat. <laughs> I'm watching people <laughs> post up tonight. I can actually read something for a change while I'm sitting here and not have to look at my phone, so... I got everybody checking in and saying hello and what's happening. So uh, definitely. Did, hey, did I know I ran into you at the uh, Roadster, uh, you know, L.A. Roadster show at the museum there. Did you happen to get down to the Tom McEwen uh, memorial service? I heard that was off the hook, and it was uh, down at the Sheridan, but I don't know if you went down to that or not. Uh, no, I did not. After I saw you in the museum, you know, we had the Cackle Fest down there at Pomona. And then after that, <clears throat> that was it. I didn't, didn't get in. And we flew back home that night on right. Saturday night. Because I know they just had it, I think, last weekend, and I couldn't uh, make it because I was due to no, work. No, I and, didn't make it. So I, I saw And you travel, you travel a lot. You're, you're always gone. <laughs> well, I mean, it's you're either on, for work or, or, or I'm playing somewhere. So thank God I'm able to do both, you know. So I have to be grateful for that. And uh, Sometimes to work. Sometimes work. It's you know. It's, I got to lose some of the days on some of these important events, and that was one of them. And I would have loved to seen that uh, memorial service. But uh, anybody chime in if you heard anything or how that went? Because I saw pictures only, and I, I just because I know I saw you at the museum, and I, that made me think about it. What else? So is you're heading up. <clears throat> you're heading up here on uh, for next Saturday, then up to Sonoma. Yeah, I'll be up there uh, Friday. I'll get into town Friday late, and then I'll come out for the race on Saturday. And uh, 
watch qualifying and probably this is what I call the pay to see my friends the day event. You know, I usually hang out with everybody even though I bought seats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the action's down on the track. You can go up in the grandstands, but it's uh, I'm hoping it cools off. We've had nothing but 100-degree weather here for a week plus, and I'm hoping it cools off. I was watching the Napa weather, and it's uh, going to be in the 70s and 80s, so it should be just, just perfect for drag racing. Uh, that, that, I, I didn't want to hear that you said it was in the hundreds. I didn't think it would be that <laughs> hot up in the Bay Area. but Well, that's, well we're not in the Bay. I'm in the... I'm in Loomis, right above Sacramento, and it's been a hundreds. And I just watched the news today, and they said, "Oh, Napa's in its 70s and 80s." I said, "Wow," because uh, we're looking forward to that. Let's get out of the heat. Oh yeah, the uh, hundred degree heat down here. It's been about 90, 95. I, I when we were gone, I heard it was 115. So you know how that goes. <laughs> it's like I'm sure, sure <laughs> happy had, to be in Seattle. The ocean. <laughs> yeah, I was sure happy to be. Well, Spokane was beautiful weather. Couldn't ask for a better day. I think it was like 72, 74 degrees out there. I couldn't ask for a better day. And in uh, Seattle, it rained out on Friday, and then uh, s s uh, Saturday night was beautiful temp. So we'll see what happens in Sonoma. That'll be a very uh, cool place to uh, hang out. Hopefully I'll find a place to park this time. Every time I go there, I always park out in the top, you know, somewhere where it's black at night and you can't find a car. So <laughs> I might have to yeah, move it. Up, up on the hills up there oh, i know so what else you got going on before we run out of time on the, on our interview what else you got going on that's uh, you might want to share i know you said about the cackle fest so if you guys don't get a chance uh, definitely get out there friday night yeah just if you have, if you get on friday night that's you know the nighttime qualifying for ehra the top fuel cars are it's just stunning i mean they hit some low et numbers now you know the funny cars are faster than the top fuel cars now so they're um, pushing some good numbers so people can get out there and then uh, go through to see all the, the cars they've uh, put on a pretty good car show and a lot of vintage stuff um, things can be a great time out there for people oh it's a, i always have a good time and i know that uh, definitely got to get tickets on that one side of the track because if you're not and you're it's sunny out and it's hot you're not going to be happy on the other side of the uh, <laughs> I already learned this from going yeah. up there. And don't get the cheap seats, folks. I'll tell you that already. Don't sit in the uh, general admission, I'm telling you. You uh, will be very regretful <laughs> that you sat out there. <laughs> yeah, but that, what's nice about it is uh, you can walk through the pits, and, um, you know, they uh, they put on a good show there. And you know, they have a, a – and what's nice is John Force will walk around and Ron Caps, everybody, they'll walk around and, and, and talk to you. And that's what's uh, what's nice about that racetrack. True. Yeah, they'll go out and mingle with the crowd. And it's always kind of funny because, like you said, they're all out there and they're out. And you can walk into any spot of the area and you'll find somebody doing something or signing autographs. So it's definitely worth going to see this uh, event. Anytime the NHRA runs the big show into your uh, town, it's definitely worth uh, going to see for sure. Yeah, we appreciate them inviting us back this year. Uh, the Cackle Fest cars to bring them out and uh, let us light them up and uh, have our way with them. But, uh, it was great last year, and they invited us back this year. And uh, Sabrina and uh, her dad, you know, uh, she's running the show this year and going to put on a good show for everybody. Yeah, she's uh, – she, I, I, I get nothing but great great comments about Sabrina and their uh, altered car out there, and they're, they're ones to watch out there on, on their circuit. So definitely going to have yeah, a fun night. Yeah, she was runner-up again. She's a, she's posted on Facebook. She's a bridesmaid again. She <laughs> tried to get in that winner circle. <laughs> well, I'm sure she will. She keeps she keeps running the way they do. They will just have to be at the oh, right yeah, place. Oh yeah, that that car is right on the money. She'll get there. Well, it should be a kick. It should be definitely a, a good thing to see. And like I said, to love to see them all running. If you guys are running, when you guys run your altered stuff out. Uh, Keep us posted and let us know or shoot me an email to us and let me know when you guys are appearing someplace down here or in Bakersfield when you guys are bringing down. We'll definitely be talking again, I'm sure. Sounds good. So I appreciate you get, taking a few minutes today, Jim. I, I appreciate you taking some time and uh, chatting about the vehicles, and congratulations on your find. Well, thank you, and uh, got a great show. Keep up the good work, and uh, we'll keep following you. You got it, brother. And thanks a lot for thanks for taking a few minutes again. I always appreciate you guys. Uh, 
I run into you and I go, hey, there's got to be somebody who wants to tell a story or two, you know, so thank you for sharing a few minutes of the Joker's Wild and the Gordy Bodden car. I mean, that's awesome. So good luck on both of them, and I look forward to seeing your brother in Sonoma. All right. Have a good evening. Thanks again. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Kretz, Joker's Wild, and now he's got the uh, Gordy Bonin dragster, so that's going to be cool. That's a cool thing to get. So that's, that's pretty wild, man. That, so you that's find cool. Some, you find some of these guys who are heroes, and you find their cars years later, you know, and uh, it'd be kind of cool. It's like uh, our buddy Ross when he called a couple of weeks ago and he had the uh, Castronova uh, bunny, the, the funny car, you know, the custom body car and that's cool mm -hmm. to have a piece of that history so and they own it and they own it they it, own it it's I like mean, it's you like know sitting in your own backyard it's like the guy who bought the snake and the mongoose cars you know he right. had the original trailers and the original car and he's got them sitting i mean you don't have to put them in a museum just put them in your own museum at your house and look at them say shit those things were bad to the bone the so, ultimate trophy that's it i won't i own the car that won you know i got the snakes and the guys who made it yeah. Ton. I saw that Pat. Uh, Pat said something about the uh, uh, the mongoose uh, memorial. Said it was pretty intense. So I saw a lot of people saying a lot, a lot of good things online, and uh, it was sad to lose a, a legend. So right. But we got to keep on running, man, and just treasure our moments with our people that are in our business around us, and uh, people who are racing, and people who do things that are good, and your family members. I always say this every time. You know, treasure us while we're here. Support. Support, exactly. Support. And since right. we're talking about support, you know, and, and I know uh, we got big Jim uh, Black calling up in a few seconds, but I was going to say a big shout-out to Bobby Cottrell. Uh, I, heard, I heard it's his birthday today, so I'd sing to you, but nah, I ain't going to do it on the show. So Aww. anyway, happy birthday, Bobby. <laughs> hope, hope your day's awesome, and uh, good luck. Keep on kicking ass out there. And anybody else celebrating a birthday today, might as well just – Put it on out there. Happy birthday. Oh, look at this. We got a bunch of folks listening in. Thank you so much. The glory days of drag racing. racing. They have accepted our invitation, so we are broadcasting in there. So we apologize for not putting your comments up on the screen, uh, but uh, we'll follow up on those. You, you were telling me uh, <laughs> when it was out that I, I was out supercar racing this weekend. You know, I was telling you about it. I sent you some pictures. I went to... Uh, an event that one of our vendors was having and they were out at the Fontana Raceway and we were driving, we got the chance to drive a, a Lamborghini Huracan and the, uh, a Porsche Carrera supercar on that uh, exotic racing thing. Ask me how fast I got to, it's in kilometers so I felt like I was going fast. <laughs> it said about 150, 150 in kilometers, 160 in kilometers, so that comes out to about 100. <laughs> Hundred miles an hour. <laughs> Are you sure that's not forty-five? Uh, it's sixty. A <laughs> hundred is sixty. So, my buddy at work was telling me, "Oh, my, me and my buddies were doing two hundred. I go, "Yeah, okay, that's hundred twenty. <laughs> that's hundred and twenty. But you don't have enough yeah. time to get the cars up to super speed. I'll tell you, that's a pretty wild thing to try. If you haven't ever got a chance to do this, and I'm going to have those guys on the show. I already talked them up and uh, wanted to have them from. Uh, exotic uh, race cars out there in Fontana, so I'll, I'll kick that up uh, once I get all the info again. And ah, here we go. We got our caller coming in. All right. All right, and you're live. Uh, radio buzz. Who we got? Hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're just Mr. laughing. Joe <laughs> hey, Jimmy, what's happening, brother? Mr. Jim Black, what's ladies and gentlemen. What's up, my brother? How what? are you? What's up? I didn't know how to. Good for you today? Oh, you, I, you like how I just piece everything together at first thing in the morning at 6 or 7 in the morning this morning? Hey, Jim, what Hallelujah. are you doing? Want to be on the show? No, you're on. Hey. You're here. Hey. Hey. Yay. You, get off of my cloud. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty great. You know, somebody's got to say stupid stuff. You know that, Jim. That's why I'm the host. I have, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm the head idiot. <laughs> the head I'm idiot. I'm hey, I'm a What happened? But it's all good. Ah, you were cutting in and out, so I didn't catch you. So, so what's here? Go I'm what gonna pull over. I'm driving. I'm sorry. Uh, see, that's what'll happen. You'll be anyway. gone. You'll be gone. I'm like, where's Jim? Hello, hello, waitress, Jim. Waitress? Jim. <laughs> Jim. That's, that's me at the track all the time. Oh, I see you when you're doing that. So I didn't know what to give you the proper, the proper. Ta I I don't know what what, what, what <laughs> we. I, I called you the track master at the. Famoso, but I know they, they call you everywhere, so I don't know. What's your technical job? What do you call yourself, and what do you do? 
Doesn't call him safe self uh, for dinner though. Go ahead. <laughs> it, it 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 all depends, man. It depends on the day. It's just it. Mostly, I do the track. So I guess I don't know. You could call me a track prep specialist. I don't. Know. You could call me anything. It doesn't matter. But yeah, primarily my responsibility is to make sure that that track is safe for all the racers for the day. Well, you did a hell of a job on both of the tracks that I saw you at. These guys were these guys were gripping the track pretty good. So. Nice work, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I had fun, man. Spokane, I love that track. It's fun. That's a cool place. I really enjoyed being there, too. It was cool <laughs> that you guys didn't kick me off the pad. <laughs> hey, and you had a great place to play on the whole bit. It was great, right in the middle. Right, yeah, right right down, looking down at the people. I even heard you when I was on the tractor, and that thing was screaming, and I still heard you. Well, you, we try to be as loud as the nitro cars, but we proved the fact that we weren't a few years ago. It worked. I'm it getting worked. more gear. Don't worry. I'm getting more gear. I'll be louder than them okay. guys eventually. We'll work on that. Craig didn't tell you that he had a whole bunch of speakers that you could have used, but oh well, we'll do it. <laughs> if you do that next year, we'll have to make sure that happens. We'll make sure we put it through the real PA throughout the whole track. That'll yeah. really irritate make, everybody. Make a rock show out of it. It'll be hot. <laughs> we might not get called back. Oh, yeah. I guess. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were going to start. Go ahead. No, I, I guess as far as then getting back to your initial question, I don't know. I mean, it it, it just depends on who's who's asking and, and who's saying. But, yeah, I guess to answer your question, that's what it is. Well, some, primarily track prep guy. Right. Well, somebody posted the it. The guy on the man. tractor. Well, yeah, but that's – it's just got to be just as important as the guy who launches the cars because if the cars don't go down the track, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Yeah, I mean, that, those two go hand in hand, and I really have big appreciation for the starters because I, I wouldn't want to do that personally. That's a huge responsibility to me, and and for what I do, I take it real personal because, again, I mean, if I don't do my job, the end result is somebody's going to wad up their car or who knows. True. And there wasn't too much, there wasn't too much uh, bad action other than one or two things in Seattle, I think, and that uh, crazy first uh, qualifying thing with Chris Davis. At right. That was yeah. wild. Yeah. Little, little oil under his tire, but that happened. True. It can happen anything. That's, that's yeah, it doesn't matter how good that track is. If you have oil underneath that tire, it's like see ya. skating rink. Yeah, it was, yep. it was kind of crazy, but, you know, it is what it is. And these, you're racing, that's going to happen to anybody. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting to see the, the how, how these things get prepped. I mean, it's definitely something that, you know, what do you guys uh, – what's the normal prep for a track? Because, you know, most guys out there listening the, – the guys who race know all that shit. But, you know, the kids that are listening or anybody who has never been down to a track or stepped on it, what do you guys usually do to prep a track to get it ready for racing? You know, it's interesting. And we're real lucky. I mean, uh, for Bakersfield, we're, we're probably um, one of the better equipped tracks that I've ever seen as far as it being a non-corporate operation. But – Primarily, it's it's a routine thing, believe it or not. It's a it's a we've simplified it at Bakersfield to where you do the basic you wash the track every morning. Um, we I take that lovely tractor that makes so much noise out there, and we drag the track and and get it all nice and even, the rubber all evened out. And depending on the weather of the day, I mix the glue accordingly, and we go out and squirt the track. And, you know, it's funny. I can We can make it to where you could literally not walk on that thing, but there again, we want to have a good show and want to keep people coming back and not break their cars. So it's kind of a – that's that's where the finesse comes in, and you really have to look at it, walk out, touch it, feel it, smell it, whatever you want to call it. But Right. You have to realize that what you're doing is, hey, you you not only want these guys to get down safely, but you want to do it without breaking anything. It's kind of an interesting thing. You said glue. I mean, is that the, that's what they call that's VHT, correct? That's what we call. It, yeah, it's it's had different names in the past. They call it track bite. It was VHT for the longest time, and now what we use is called PJ1. Right. 
So you, you guys, yeah. you guys actually have to. It's not you. You mix it according to the track. Track. That's how that. That's how you guys work that. Temperature primarily, and you know it will. It totally depends on temperature. Like Saturday and Sunday, for instance. I mean Saturday out Bakersfield, you've been out there on hot days. We had a track temp of 151 degrees out there, and wow. we're running funny cars down that thing. So you really have to look at that and say, hey, <laughs> if you if you put too much product down, you know, too much of the glue, it'll actually make it like snot out there and nobody will get down. So that's where the finesse comes in. You have to judge it as far as what you're going to do and what you're going to put down to keep that, keep the track to where those cars will go down it. Right. I, you know, I never knew any of that, so that's why I figured I'm asking the question. You know, yeah. you think about it. And, uh, yeah. Sh- it, Go ahead. And it's great questions, too, because it's, it's for anybody and everybody, I always encourage anybody, even from other tracks, I've done this in the past as well, is, hey, I'd be more than willing to have uh, get out there and teach anybody that wants to know. It's just they have to be out there when I get out there, and that's usually like 530 in the morning, so... It's me, the crickets, and usually John Bowser that's out there, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, and he's always up, so he's he's probably gone oh, to yeah. bed as soon as the sun gone down. You know, <laughs> sorry, John. He he and I he and I are the two troopers, that's for sure. No, I know he's they're always out there. It's something I I would be interested in checking out because I always thought it would be kind of cool to work on a track and see what it's about, you know. And when they had LACR sure. here, and I was always trying to bug uh, Bernie to. Get, See if I can get on and maybe throw the do the water box thing. But I learned something about water box too this week, or the, from this trip. <laughs> These guys were just putting yeah. a little bit of water down, and I'm watching Bucky and uh, Rupert and all the other guys right behind them. Uh, they were like, you know, put more water down on the ground, and they they were watering it down. So that's something I didn't notice before that you know helped. Right. Uh, I think that helps get the tires a little more stickier too when they're doing the burnout, huh? It does. That's a preference for a lot of the teams, but the general rule, you know, we try to teach these guys. And that's not an easy deal because you're standing in that place all doggone day long, you know, not only putting water down, but uh, cleaning off the pad as well. But, yeah, some teams like a lot of water on the the tires, and that's personal preference. Uh, I, just, I noticed they seem to grab a little more when they put a little more water down, but that might just be something that – just because the track was prepped well right right yeah and you'll hear it too i mean that's that's primary uh, the interesting thing and and even you i mean you can hear it even when your guitar is out of tune right one chord believe it or not a a well-trained ear you can hear it on the track when those guys do their burnout and when that thing comes and it screeches you can actually tell if that's a really – it's going to be one of those deals that, hey, watch this, hold my beer. <laughs> We're going in for a neck breaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. Because I, that's what we stand back and ask the guys, hey, ask him how his rear end feels after he gets out of that car. <laughs> I, I never, I've never, never been down on the far end of the track when they come out only once or twice, but I never get to see their faces when they're out of that car when that thing's done so, those oh. crazy rides. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the big show. You watch these guys, and they get out of the car at the top end, and they're huffing and puffing, and you're looking at them going, you're only in that thing for like four seconds. What's up with that? Exactly. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I was getting a laugh when I had uh, Ron Caps on and Jim Campbell. We were talking about, hey, your whole career was less than an hour in the car. Literally, yeah. You, right. You time that, yeah. Each lap. You're yeah. in for three seconds. You do the math. How many how many runs did you run on a weekend? The whole the whole year is less than less than less than 15 minutes, buddy. So don't tell me. How funny is that, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that that is yeah. pr- pretty crazy. You had Jim Cam- Campbell on there too, huh? Oh yeah, we were I we were messing with Chris because we were asking him what it was like to uh, step in a funny car and what's it like to run. And he says, well, tell Chris to stand up, and we'll punch him in the chest as hard as you can. That's what it feels like. Right. So, Chris, we're going funny car riding right, right after the show. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> That's, That's what's going to happen, you know. <laughs> so we'll Yeah, be- <laughs> he, Jim licensed at Bakersfield, and he had a pretty good time there. Well, Jim's a wild man, so it's always good to talk with him, talk to Ronnie. 
So all those guys are great. You yeah. Know. I got Terry Haddock coming on pretty soon, too. I talked to Terry, and uh, that's going to be a pretty interesting show with him uh, telling his Very story. Very nice. Very nice. So it would be good. But yeah, I, that's one of the things, too. I mean, you think about it, and and what you what you experience not only in a in a totally different environment that you're used to in Spokane, believe me, that's a real different environment than Bakersfield, and even Seattle, and 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 look at the the crowd and and how much fun you had, and, it, and that's primarily, I'll bet you, if you ask anybody that does this, and all the hours that we put in on the racetrack, and all the crew, and, and you know, we do have a fi- phenomenal crew at Bakersfield. But if you look at these guys after a race and how beat up they are, and you walk up to any of them and ask them why you really do this, because, you know, literally it's 14, 15 hour days, you know, look at all the people out there and all the fun that these guys are having and the races especially, and that's why they do it. And, and that's primarily, it, this is exactly why I do the track is because it's not a prideful thing, but I really enjoy the heck out of all these people taking their time coming out to the racetrack and doing what they do and we get to be the ones to help them do that that's really bitching that's uh just to be a little part of what you guys do is always cool for me to just be there you know that's uh, i've learned to appreciate all the what those guys do i love being at the track dude i i ubered to this i ubered to the track in, in spokane the first time the guys were sleeping in the hotel i'm like dude i gotta come <laughs> hang out with my buds um, i would take you up yeah, I'm I'm there. Uh, well, I should have when you went back to, uh, from Seattle, but, I, I, you know, I, I Ubered the oh. next morning, too. So I like, Ubered home, Ubered. I was like, you know what? I'll stay here. I love this Sometimes stuff. Sometimes that's safer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, it, to me, it, it, yeah. it's, it's a great thing to be part of the, you know, this, this little traveling circus with all the people. And, it, and it's funny to see all their expressions, to see their faces light up when these things go flying by. I mean, it's definitely oh, one yeah. of the coolest uh coolest part to me there isn't nothing much that you know anything with auto racing is always cool so but drag racing just i've been very lucky to stand where you stand in there and i'd like to learn more as much as i can so hey joe i just want to give a shout out to i just want to give a shout real quick a shout out to worldwide sports at drag racing the group has just accepted the feed so thank you guys out there for tuning in and watching the show well thank you guys right on We've seen what's happening out right there. Right on. So what else? What else you got, got going on there besides just being the, the track master? You know what? Interestingly enough, and and I say that all that started at Spokane. It did. I mean, this all started back in 2010, and and I learned what I do the hard way because I was thrown in a situation in Spokane where um, this is at the tail end of when Bucky had the track and and uh ron hudson and and uh all our other fun crew that that we had out there had taken over the track and i had nothing i had no idea how to go out there and prep a track believe it or not and through talking to uh different individuals steve gibbs being one of them mark dawson believe it or not that's how i originally met him and just talking to these guys um just figuring it out over time but you know, Spokane, where you were, that, that's a really unique and interesting track. I mean, it, it's only we only had a six-and-a-half-month season, so you really had to pound out as much as you can in a short period of time. Right. And then when I left there and came back down to Southern California, thank God, finally, um, working at Bakersfield was there. I didn't say anything about anything that I knew. I, I primarily went in there just a, as a tech person. Right. And gradually throughout, throughout time, hey, they found out that, oh, my gosh, he can do all this too? Okay, cool. Well, you were, guess I, what? I, Here I am. Yeah, you were sent for, huh, to do these these, yeah. uh, these, these other runs. You, you yeah. basically are right out of Los Angeles, correct? You're out basically Bakersfield, you're kind of your home area for uh, the track, or uh, you do other tracks as well? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and a lot of us for out in Bakersfield, it's funny because most of us don't even live in Bakersfield. You know, I travel 180 miles one way just to get to the track to do all this fun. <laughs> I thought 100 miles was bad. You're What, what are you, south the South Los Angeles down there? I'm in uh, Costa Mesa, believe it or not. Uh, 
I I know where Costa Mesa is. I I've been there before. I used to hang draperies. I what? I did a drapery thing for a bank, and he's he's genius. Has brought a bunch of propane. <laughs> I got to tell this one because everybody will laugh. <laughs> draperies. Brought, yeah, you'll laugh because you you laugh. But we had the electronic bron- those blinds that come all the way down on the, those track windows. We're putting the stuff in on a Saturday, and these guys bring this propane uh, lifts and close the doors inside. Hmm. I guess hmm. everybody got a little sick that day. I go, I'm done. I, All right. I don't need this. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> I go, I don't need the money All that right. bad. It ain't worth dying for, not to hang a drape. What are you guys dying for? I hung drapes. The drapes. <laughs> hey, tough guy. That'd be bad thing on your tombstone, yeah. brother. <laughs> That's right. I hung a drape once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, you know, it's a funny, funny thing. And fate taking you where they are. Look where you're at. No, man. I'm still hanging. Especially drapes. you got your own radio show. You're still doing it. That's it's good. A, hey, you know, it, it, I haven't grown up any. Just 50 years later, you know, I'm just still doing the same crazy shit. You know, just doing what we can get away with. Yeah, right. And right? asking and asking Gotta people crazy it. questions. Hey. <laughs> but it was. Hey. You know, I know. Go ahead. What? It's all good though. <laughs> that's that's how we learn, and and that's that's the beauty of it. Hey, and and you you probably with the exception of the, the, you know, going to Spokane and Seattle, that was probably the first time you actually got to hang out at the starting line for a long period of time, wasn't it? Uh, you are correct again, sir. Usually, I, well, I never sit in the middle when I'm at Bakersfield. I'm always on the sides. So I kind of act right. like I own the place. They haven't thrown me out of there yet. So <laughs> I just walk on. Where's your wristband? <laughs> Which one? There's the wristband. Hey, I got the we number all one. know who you are. Trust me. <laughs> It's all good. I, I always appreciate the love, man. I always appreciate the love that the, the sport's giving back, you know, even though uh, I just play rock and roll, you know, and I just got a chance to, to share the love. And, and my guys in the band, were going, you know, they call me the mayor because I'm always talking to everybody all the time. I go, well, <laughs> you know, this is what I do. This is what, you know, this is what brought – Chris was the one who found me to say, hey, let's do a radio show. And I said, rock and roll and racing. So yeah. that's how this is all going. Good man, Chris. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, we have a good time doing this, and, and you know, I was really surprised, Jim, is when I went to the track, and you, you know, you guys were saying, uh, a lot of those guys I didn't even meet, they were saying, dude, we listen to your show, and that was a part that was like, wow, really? I was impressed that people yeah. listened to it, so thank you guys all for listening. God bless you. So. No, that's, that's <laughs> the jamming part of it, too. Between this and, and I can't remember the other program, but I heard something that Bucky had that's how all that started. Bucky had mentioned on, on some other radio program that I was going to Spokane, and oh my God, phone starts blowing up, and it's the same thing that happens with you, I'm sure. Oh, I'm just stoked. I mean, it's like it was cool, and, and like you said, you're like, come on down to the front line, you stand right here all day, man. I was I was going live for all the rounds because I wasn't doing the uh, rocking and racing show, so a lot of people had zoomed in and, and checked in on that that whole both races i mean it was over 100 people viewing at one time so i was right. like wow i go i guess we've uh, arrived somewhere we've we've arrived <laughs> hey per- we just perfectly pick- done what were we gonna say chris sorry we, we were- just picked up another group that makes uh wow we're really reaching out tonight thank you so much everyone the drag racing the good the bad and the ugly thank you everyone for tuning in over there as well and uh, Pat, Pat Christie said that you guys do an awesome job on the on the track. So just wanted to let you know some of the fans that are watching the show or giving you a heads up, you know, and telling you guys Thank that you guys. your work is not gone unappreciative, I'm sure. And I'm sure all the racers that are out there know that, you know what, without good track prep, man, you know, they know. They know it wouldn't be good if it wasn't for you guys. I hear you. Well, and like I tell everybody, if it, if I'm doing it, if I wouldn't go down that track, I sure as heck wouldn't let anybody else go down it. Have you done any racing yourself, or are you, are you a, a race man, or are you, like me, a spectator still? You know, I have in the past. I have my license, uh, my EPT license for quite some time. I did that up in Spokane. It was primarily just to show everybody how easy the process is and get them away from doing things um, at the track that that we kind of frown upon as far as the rules that the NHRA holds us to and and uh, 
Yeah, so I did my fair share of, of uh, running cars down the track, but for me, it's it's not my thing. I mean, uh, competitive-wise, the only one I ever really compete against is me, so I'm good with that. Well, you know, I, I didn't know if you were a runner or not. I figured I'd yeah. check with you. And it's tough, too, because, you know, I can't really do both at the track, and I've, I've actually experienced that at a March meet a couple a couple years back. Um, I had a friend of mine had a car out there that I, he wanted me to drive, and sure enough, I get up to the line, and somebody uh, had a mishap on the starting line, and I had to get out of the car, go clean it up, and it's just the whole entire thing. You can't focus on both at the same time. So. Right. I'm really happy with what I do. I have the opportunity to, to, to play around and get into cars every once in a while, but as far as a driver, nah. I saw a picture on your post, so I didn't, on your page, because I was stealing everybody's pictures to post up this morning. And Was that you driving that Perfect. dragster? There's a picture of a dragster. The what? I'm sorry? There's a, dra there's, a, there's a dragster coming straight at you, and uh, I don't know if that was you in the car. Yeah, the, there was a helmet on. It looked like the snake's old car, but I wasn't sure if it was or not, so I was just wondering if that was you driving. No. Wasn't a dragster, no. It probably was a cackle car that I was in. Ah. Couple door cars, that was about it that I had driven. Now I have a deep appreciation for people that drive, especially the faster cars, because oof. Right. Yeah. That stuff's crazy. I, I was, I still have that desire to give it a run once. You know, one of these days I will uh, make it happen before the uh, <laughs> the lifetime is over. I got to do something crazy, you know. Hey, one way or the other, if you come out to the track, we'll get you. And I've taken people down the track uh, several times, even my Impala. I just get you in a car and take you down the track, man. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I think it'd be a fun. You have to experience that. I'd love to just try it. I, I just did the supercar event uh, this weekend. I was down at that thing in Fontana, the uh, exotic car racing thing. And uh, that was pretty crazy, man. Uh, once, nice. But they only give you five laps, so this is the thing. By the time you dial in those five laps, it's over. I get my best time on the fourth lap, and then they go, "Oh, that's it, gotta go." So you gotta yeah, come right? up. You gotta come <laughs> in with probably ten grand to go race those cars. That's to get it down to about a hundred laps where you can do that 140, 150 mile an hour actual real time. Right, right. But, but it was pretty crazy. I'm, I'm, I get st it. I'm still looking to do it one of these trips. But uh, when the, where where are you running well, to next? What? Where are you running next? Are you running to any of the tracks, or are you taking a break? Sorry, I was cut you off. No, actually, our, our next event's in Bakersfield in a, in a few weeks. Um, and then after after this, it's basically back to racing in Bakersfield for a while. It, it solely depends um, off of it. Oh, excuse me, let me back up. I, I really apologize. No, Mission. we'll be in Boise in a couple of weeks. The whole group of us will. Wow. That's yeah. cool. That's the the night yeah, fire up there. Yeah, that's yeah. one I that's gotta another go. Another one you should go up to. I gotta get out there one one year because I know I hear that's the ultimate party track and the ultimate race uh, thing. And I guess what do they got? They bring out like sixteen cars. They do a tater tater race for the other sixteen, the other yeah. uh, eight guys that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think that yep. I think Bobby won that. I think that uh, last year or the year before I saw something yeah, that was last yeah, year. the Tater Baker yeah, or whatever. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> tater Baker, that's, that's what they call it. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, that's a great track too. I mean, for for the Northwest, I mean, you couldn't have a a, a better run track than the news do up in up in Boise. And it's real similar. They have a real great crew, just as we do down in Bakersfield, and very similar in a lot of ways. Well, that's, that's good. I mean, they bring in you guys up, so you guys must have the professional uh, touch that these guys are lacking, obviously, because they could ask him for you. <laughs> we, we primarily go with support because they come down and they support the March meet and they support the uh, reunion. They're down pretty much every year. So, yeah, we go up there as a, as a group. And uh, whatever the news need us to do, I did parking last year, which is my least favorite thing to do. Um, but, yeah, we primarily do whatever they need help with and make that event happen for them. I mean, it's a great deal. As long as they don't put you in one of those uh, tents selling, you know, whatever, T-shirts or Oh, boy. Beers. No, you'd be there with me. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd do it. We'd have fun. 
I wish I can get up yep. to go do it. That would be a good. Well, what weekend is that? Is it right after Sonoma? The 11th. I think it's the 11th and 12th of August. <laughs> I'll, I'll, go, I'll go up with so you. you. Got, yeah. My girlfriend's yeah. birthday's that weekend, so I told her I was going to take her to Monterey. So maybe I'll just say, hey, we're going up uh, to Monterey the long way. Rock and roll, man. There's plenty of people that you could hitch a ride with, that's for sure. I'm sure I will hitch a ride right through with the boot right through the butt. Here you go. You want to go and take yeah. away from my birthday? <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. Nah, You'd have a lot of fun. It's a really, really neat place. We'll have to try this next year for sure. I'd love to get up there. I, I love just being up in the Northwest, man, because the weather's bitching and uh, it's a great place to be. The scenery's cool. It's not like Bakersfield where it's nice and flat and hot. <laughs> Got a lot of heat, buddy. That's it. Oh it yeah, was, it's it's it a dry it's a dry heat, baby. That's what they say. Put your head yeah. in the oven. Put your head in the oven. Tell me how dry that heat is, right? <laughs> exactly. Still, what still it burns. Is. These people are oh, nuts. good. Oh, it feels oh, great. Good. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> oh, we gotta love it. You know, I got. In a couple of minutes, I got uh, Mr. Dennis Taylor coming on, so this is going to be fun to chat with him. Oh, too. nice. I, I called, him, nice. called him last minute, but I did talk to him when we were in uh, Seattle about coming on the show, but I didn't tell him exactly when I'd call him. So first thing this morning, hey, Dennis, what you doing, buddy? Oh. Well, come on. <laughs> I wish I had more time in the it, day. Yeah. I know. Thank you for coming on. I did this to you last minute. I'm like, yeah. Do you want I had you scheduled on my paper, but. I go, I need a couple man. more bottles. Anytime. Oh, man, I appreciate what you guys uh, do, and I appreciate you letting me uh, hang out with you. This uh, the, These last two events was a blast, man. It's always good to see a smiling face on the front lines, you know? Well, and it, especially for you, it, it, it was, it's a great opportunity to really get in there and see what everybody does because a lot of the times, a lot of the, the fans especially, the, the inner workings of what it takes to actually put on some of these shows that we do, a lot of people have no idea. And it's a great thing that you took the time out, not only to be up there and see all of it, but you filmed it as well. So that's a great thing. And I encourage you to do that anytime you see me. Grab me, man. Uh, I'd be more than happy to get you up there. Well, we'll do it at Bakersfield for the reunion. We'll see if I can uh, keep my welcome open there. <laughs> right? You know, but it's well, always, fans, you know. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's you know it's good about Bakersfield. I mean, there's always got you. You never know who's going to be on there. Like last uh, year, we saw Jeff Deal and we saw Ron Caps there. Uh, who else? You know, of course, John Force and, and uh, Robert Hyde are always usually hanging out. And you know, you see all the legends that you grew up with. So this is one of those things that I and I encourage everybody to get on out because I'm trying to tell the story for everybody that. Drag racing is not just about the guys who race. There's the guys behind the scenes like yourself. I want to talk to some of the track owners. And, you know, we talked to Matt, Matt, Matt that one time about, you know, what's it like to just, you know, say a prayer and send the guys down the track, you know. That's an important part right. of the race too. Big time important, yeah. And, you know, the backup Very. girls. You know, everything about racing I want people to understand. There's opportunities for you to get a life in, in – or volunteer if you want to be part of something like this. this these guys are always looking for exactly good help. Right. You know? Yeah, I, actually, I, I would love to teach somebody uh, what I do. And and a lot of the times it's, it's not only difficult to find somebody that really wants to be out there and understands, but, you know, you have to have a passion for it too. And, and a lot of the people do, it's just, they don't have the avenue. And like you're saying, they don't have the avenue to say, Hey, you know, why don't you go, go talk to so-and-so at the track and, and see if, you know, they'll take you up mentor you, do whatever we get. Hey, I'm all for it. I really would like to teach people what we do out there. It's a great thing. Yeah. Cause it's an important part of racing. I mean, people don't think about that stuff. It is. Right, you know, you go, you you go to a racetrack. Well, gee, I just go and start racing. Right. Right no. <laughs> no. For the, for a lot of thing. preparation for it. Right. A lot furthest, of preparation. Furthest thing from the truth. We uh, missed. Yeah, the but the payoff is too. In all honesty, Joe, the payoff is you literally have the biggest family that you can actually even think about having, and they're all a great bunch of people. Yeah, that's 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 definitely true for sure. I think, uh, yep. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. We have another call. Is uh, what's I got Dennis on? Dig it. 
Ah, uh, we missed it. Ah, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll tell Dennis to give us a call back. Yeah, give us a call back, Dennis. Uh, Hold, give us one second. Go get him, guys, and I'll well, talk to you, and I'll see you guys at the races. That's uh, Mr. Jim Black, uh, the king of, I call him the king of track back. Because you know what? What you do is super important. So thank you for calling down, Jim. Oh, yeah. That was way cool, you know. It's, it's cool to share a little bit of everything, so just waiting to see about that. What's up, Tommy? How are you, man? How you guys doing? Hey, pop up the, you know, if you've got a house in Mexico, you got to remember this. Always hire a gringo gardener. Put the picture up. There you go. Gringo gardeners for life. That's me and my buddy. <laughs> How about that one? Gringos, gringo gardeners, 1-800-CUT-GRASS or gringogardeners.com. I own the website, so we're going to work this out. If you got a house Did you really get the website for that? Yeah, I got the website. I haven't put it up yet. Oh, that's great. you got to love it. That's, that's my great. buddy Edgar, but I told him I'd post it up just for the hell of it and get a laugh. <laughs> All right, so we are now in four different groups on Facebook. Uh, here we go. we got our caller coming in. Go ahead. Hello, hello, hello. There he is. Hey, there he is. There he is. Awesome. Hey, what's happening? We, is this Dennis? Yes, it is. Hello, Dennis. Mr. Dennis. Dennis Taylor, Dennis, uh, Dennis Taylor, we're Taylor. Talking, boys. Oh, we're, we're harassing Jim Black. That's what we were harassing with at the moment and getting some info on track prep and what's it like to, you know, okay. get all those tracks together. So how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing as well as could be expected for a guy my age, you know? Well, you know, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. What are you, about 25 now, 26? Yeah, yeah I'm about 26 with uh, 29 years' experience. Well, yeah. Nice. <laughs> there you 26 go. years of 29 experiences. Well, <laughs> at least he had them, right? <laughs> I, when I was 26, I think I had one experience, so at least he's up on me. Hey, there you go. Hey, I just want to give one more shout-out. We got uh, Drag Racing new? International. They just joined in on the group. So we're really, really reaching out tonight. This is great. This is good. Well, Dennis Taylor has the evil, wicked, mean, and nasty uh, nostalgia funny car, and he's got Taylor Motorsports, which – I figured I'd touch a couple of questions, and, you know, I know you've been doing this for a while with the uh, drag racing, so I know just want to get a little bit of the history of what you got going on. I remember alcohol funny cars went back in the day, and I know you were a big time into that, but what you what did you start in on? Well, actually, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Roger Garton, my late buddy Roger Garton, actually got me my start in drag racing as a crew guy. And that was back in uh, 1975, and uh, I went on to many different things, including working with Rob Bruins and Jim Green on the Green Elephant out of Seattle. Remember that. And when I, when I came back to Southern California, I teamed up with Dave Braskett, and we ran Top Fuel together. In fact, we used to run, get this, we used to run a Top Fuel car, him and I and our two girlfriends, and that was it. And we ran, you know, <laughs> national events and division races back then, just just the four of us. How crazy was that? That sounded like it would be kind of fun, though. It's just kind of limited. You just pack up the car or station wagon and, and pull, the co tr pull the trailer behind you and hit a track, right? Well, it was, yeah, it really was. Of course, it was a whole different sport back then, you know, than what it is today. Right. Today and, uh, but anyway, learned a lot, had a lot of fun. I always wanted to drive ever since the first day I went to a drag race. And uh, eventually had to build my own car. I built a, I built a big block Chevy, uh, what they used to call an Econo funny car back in the late 80s, or late, late 70s. I remember. And that was my first ride. And I remember Do you that. remember that car? I don't remember the car itself, but I remember the Econo funny car uh, fields back then. That was kind of a cool little thing. What were you guys running? They weren't blown motors, right? No, it was a big block Chevy with a single four barrel and a turbo 400 transmission, and they would run, you know, 860s, 870s, 160 miles an hour. Man, we thought we were really something. We'd run all the all the big uh, funny car races in Orange County and all of that back then, and we thought, man, we were really somebody. <laughs> the sound... I, I, I remember seeing a bunch of those cars, you know, they had a uh, car craft or popular hot riding, whatever those magazines were back in the day. And I remember seeing a street car that they turned in. So it must have been one of those Econo cars that had the funny car body that they made for the street, which was kind of the same kind of concept. So I remember I'd go, 
if I can only get one of those and just drive it on the street, I'd be happy. Yeah, that that, that would have been pretty cool. I mean, uh, there could be, there could have been some street time with my car. I was still living at home at my parents' house, and it could there could be a story or two of us driving it up and down the street. Maybe <laughs> it could be, huh? We'll just have to. It depends <laughs> on how far we dig in and how far you want to twist, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost like Randy Winkle taking his car right down the street for, you know, for when he gets done. You don't even uh, trailer. He just gets in the car and drives it home to his house. <laughs> yep. I mean, Randy's just right across the street there from Famoso. I mean, big deal. He's out in the country. So what, right? Yeah, they're not, they're not, there ain't nobody going to get him. <laughs> <laughs> so, nope. Uh, they're, they're not going to bother him at all. Yeah. Uh, so... As you kept as you kept going down, how'd you get into the alcohol ranks? What 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 got you into alcohol racing? Well, actually, I after that stint with the Econo Funny Car for a couple of years, uh, my partner Dave Raskett and I switched roles basically, and I started driving his top fuel dragster. Right. So I went from an Econo Funny Car right to a you know a five second top fuel dragster, wow. and drove that for about three and a half years until we just flat ran out of money. And uh, you just couldn't compete with it anymore. That was about the time they took Top Fuel out of the Division Series. And we just didn't have a lot of races to go to. Right. We had a few match races. And, you know, and the real sad part for me was every time we went to a national event, you know, like Pomona <clears throat> and, and uh, Firebird over there in Phoenix, you know, you pull around the corner and the bump on the scoreboard was quicker than you've ever gone before. And that was a little disheartening. But I did qualify for one national event in Top Fuel and then got beat by Dick LaHaye in the first round. So <laughs> at least I can say that. <laughs> well, you're still racing. Dick's not, right? Is, is Dick, I don't even think, <laughs> I don't think if he's still in, in the sport. Is, is I don't know if he still has any uh, thing going on. Maybe Kim does. I'm not sure. But I missed that name of the Miller no, car. Well, they're both retired and living in Florida now. But uh, he... He made good money doing it. and can afford to retire. I'm still, uh, I'm still just a glorified seamstress, you know, sitting in a sewing machine every day. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, come on. There's a little but bit I went, more. Uh, but I went from uh, driving top fuel, set out a couple of years, and was re approached by a couple of guys in Southern California to, to drive their their new alcohol funny car, and uh, I stayed with them for five years. Uh, Ken Head and Jerry Crawford. And then, uh, you know, being the maverick that I am, decided that uh, I wasn't going to be happy until I built my own team. I had no business trying to do this on my own, but I did anyway. And, uh, you know, struggled for a few years. And it is, and won the 2004 Winter Nationals and the 2004 Seattle National Event. Finished in the top ten a couple of years, and... I remember seeing you. you I know, remember seeing you racing that. Ran that. Yeah, ran that alcohol funny car until the end of 2009 when the economy, you know, kind of crashed. Right. And, and uh, it just, I didn't have enough backing at that at that point in time. I had great sponsors until the economy, uh, <clears throat> you know, the economy tanked, and uh, I could see that the, the light at the end of the tunnel. I was going to have to quit for a while. So, what was interesting was. Uh, I, I, I quit racing for a while, and I bought another business and morphed it into my business, and it, it seemed like it was the, the worst time economically to buy a business, but it turned out to be the right time to buy another business, and right. that was uh, I purchased the fire suit division of Phoenix Custom Apparel, morphed it into Taylor Motorsports products, and we started uh, manufacturing fire suits, which I really wanted and needed to do. Right, and it just uh, you know worked out. I see a lot of guys have your stuff across the country, so I see I see that it's the competition between the two. I mean, I don't know if you call it competition between DJ and you guys, but uh, I know there's a couple other cats too that are making suits. But uh, you know, I see your stuff out there. I mean, besides suits, is is that all you're doing? Are you doing restraints and all that stuff as well? Oh no, we we basically make a whole line of safety equipment. Uh, the engine diaper is what got us on the map with safety equipment, and that just opened the door to all the other ballistic products, transmission blankets, blower restraints, and then we started seat belts. And, I mean, now now we're a full, 
sled safety equipment company. The only thing I really don't make are gloves and helmets, you know, at this point. And, and we do a lot of, uh, a lot of work around all forms of motorsports, not just drag racing. We're involved with, uh, spirit modifieds up here in the, in the, in the, you know, the middle Oregon area. Right. Uh, we've, we've done quite a bit with, uh, some of the tractor pull guys, both suits and some new products that are out there on the tractors right now. And, uh, made uh, several uh, several hundred of these turbo restraints for both drag racing and tractor pulling so it just seems like every day there's there's kind of a new a new uh, venue opening up for us and uh, uh, we we love it you know we just love to be involved in the motorsports industry i mean i always tell people that i don't have a job i love my job i love going to work and being a part of this every day you know that's it's uh, you take your hobby and turn it into your vocation. Well, you know you kind of know what it's like. I mean, you don't ha- you don't you don't work a day. You know what I'm saying? True. I mean, it, it, I mean, I still work a day gig, but I love you know this is doing you know this show, playing rock and roll, being around the track. I mean, I'm, I'm just I, I'm just love being around all that stuff. And like you, it's any every part of motorsports, anything that's got wheels and. Uh, something i'll i'll go watch it somewhere somehow you know and and i enjoy being part of whatever i can att- contribute to you know yeah hey yeah i heard you play a little rock and roll huh? <laughs> just a little <laughs> i just stay off the you know I'll, I'll stay off two wheels though remember we i remember after my accident you came up to me and it gave me a hug and uh, said no more uh two wheels for you dude <laughs> i remember that well, at pomona that one year yeah and that you meant know, a lot funny with 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 Facebook and, and and all these all social media outlets, you know, you you it, what's cool is you keep up on what what everybody's doing, you know. And uh, when I saw you had that accident, I mean, I'd seen you around the track. We'd said hello, you know, how you doing, blah blah blah. But when I saw you had that accident, it was like, oh my god, what in the world has happened to you? And uh, I know it was pretty serious, and I'm really glad you made it through. And uh, you know, uh, it was it was just good to see you at the racetrack after all of that. No, I appreciate the uh, – that, that was a pretty emotional day for me when I first saw you guys. I was with John Hale, and he did the same thing. I'm like, wow, all these guys, I, I actually meant something to somebody in this world. I, I, I had the worst self-esteem before this accident. So after the accident, I'm glad to be alive, and I'm glad to give back whatever I can to everybody, you know, and that's, that's one of the cool things. And, you know, meeting you guys has been a, a nothing but a plus for me. So I'll get to hang out with my heroes and friends that race and get to do something cool, you know. So like you said, how cool can it be to be working with your friends every day, you know? Well, it's the greatest feeling ever. I mean, look at you now, you know, rock and roll star, professional <laughs> drag racing fan, and, and now internet radio host. I mean, come on, where's it going to end for Joe Walla? Uh, you know, I just did a video with these kids. I was an, I was the devil in the video, so <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'll be acting next. <laughs> I just want to race a car, Dennis. That's all once, once, maybe yeah. twice, maybe three times. So yeah, well, they have they have places now you can go to do that. You know, all my life, since I was 12 years old, my dad used to put me on his shoulder at Orange County Raceway, you know. All I ever wanted to do was try funny cars. Well, you know, if you want to do it bad enough, you'll figure I'm, out a I'm way gonna to do it. I'm going to figure a way, trust me. I, uh talked to Bobby before his accident with the one and we were talking back and forth and uh, time didn't just allow us to get it in there so it was kind of cool so we'll we'll make it happen somewhere and I'll I'll definitely do it but you know hanging out uh, you know with with stuff you guys are doing how how do people find your you know your your stuff do you have a website that uh, you use for your business that maybe we can post up for you guys for uh, taylormotorsports.com something like that or .net or any of that well, that's it. That's exactly it. TaylorMotorsports.com. Yes, we do have a website, and uh, you know, we we don't uh, advertise as much as some of the as, as our competitors do, only because we 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 stay b- busy all year long, and you can't you can't run a fuel or alcohol car without coming to us for something you know that we make. Just about, I, I would venture to say every car out there has some part or some piece that, you know, that we put together. They may not have all of it, you know, granted. Right. But, uh, you know, all, all of the heroes have something that we make. We do work for all of those guys every week, week in and week out. We fix their burn-up stuff, you know, between races, send it back to the next race, you know, and whatever. 
that's that's uh, you can't ask for anything better than that. And then you get to drive whenever you uh, want to take the evil, wicked, mean, and nasty car out, huh? Well, I used to, and then uh, and then my son came along and said, uh, you know, I think it's time for me to drive, Dad. <laughs> and you said maybe, maybe. Well, you know, there's 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 something interesting that comes along with age, and uh, it was kind of a right time kind of thing. Now, granted, my son Justin did not spend a whole lot of time with his dad at the racetrack. Now, people find that really kind of weird, right? You know, and uh, like when I had the alcohol car, of course, we raced a lot, and I had you know uh, a bunch of dedicated uh, crew guys, the way cool crew we used to call them. Right. And, uh, you know, Justin wouldn't, uh, he used to tell me, he says, that's way too much work for five and a half seconds of fun, you know. <laughs> well, uh, once again, Roger Garton had stepped into our lives, and he asked Justin if he would uh, go with him to the races until they got his and Mike, Torco, Mike uh, Toko's warhorse kind of figured out and kind of oversee it, you know, the, the, the crew he was putting together and whatever. And a few races turned into five and a half years. Wow. Now, what was really cool about that, like I told you, Roger had gotten me involved in, in mainstream drag racing, you know, on the inside. I was a big fan before I got involved. Uh, but it was really cool to have my son learning from Roger. And he learned more from Roger than he would have learned from me because of my, you know, crew guys and what have you. And uh, certainly one of the, the best times of my life was getting to race Roger when I was still driving. Right. We lined up side by side two or three times, you know. Here's here's my kid backing up Roger in the other lane, you know, and, I, and I'm in the opposite lane. And I've got a picture of the two of us, Roger and I, staging at uh, Bakersfield, and that's one of my most prized possessions, you know. But anyway, he wanted to drive. Uh, Roger actually let him make a couple of uh, hits in the War Horse. Wow. And, of course, you know, of course he was hooked. He actually uh, had had made some runs in my alcohol car as well, but the alcohol car is way more difficult to drive, you know, than the nitro car. Right. So a few years ago, I said, okay, I'm I'm ready to get out, and if you want to drive it, we'll race together, and and uh, you know the rest is kind of history. So I still uh, have a current license. I threaten him with that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if he uh, if he makes bad decisions, I can replace him <laughs> since I own it. <laughs> that, that's but that's he's there actually, you go. He's actually done a very very good job, uh, really, for not having any experience until now. And, and I have a theory, you know, I have a second generation theory. If you'll notice, a lot of the second generation racers do as well or better, better. Than, their, than their parents do. You don't think they're listening to all of the stuff that you're talking about with your wife or your crew chief or whatever, you know. Right. But they're soaking it up like a sponge, trust me. They, you don't think they're paying attention, but they are. Right. And, uh, you know, you look at all the second-generation ge drivers, and, uh, you know, like none of them are terrible. No. Like I say, they're, they're at least as good as their parents, if not better, and usually better. So hopefully he'll be better than I am. Well, it doesn't take much to be that. But. Oh, come on, Dee. Come on. <laughs> you know, I got to – you know, I, I know the car – I love I love the paint and I love the the thing on the evil wicked mean. I remember that car in the top fuel ranks with with the, was a probe. So, there was there any connection to that car back in the day with with it currently? Well, actually, there is a connection, and that connection is the uh, the evil wicked mean and nasty name came from an alcohol car in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. That was the and probe, it was right? Owned and driven. It was a probe. Well, right. yeah, that's, that's right. It was a probe. Kenny Youngblood designed it and, and uh, lettered it and, and all of that back then. And, of course, I had to have Kenny you know, do it for me when we decided to do that theme. But there was a gentleman by the name of Harley Griffith who owned and drove the Evil, Wicked, Mean, and Nasty. And we thought that, that was such remember. a cool car uh -huh. name and all of that back then you know that so was... when we decided to when we decided to build a nostalgia funny car uh we were kicking around different names because that that whole 
thing that you're trying to recreate. The cars had names, you know. It wasn't going to do anybody any good to put Dennis Taylor on the side of the car. Right. And Justin really came up. Justin really came up with the idea because Harley Griffith had passed away. Now, Justin and Harley Griffith had worked together at AFT Clutches, you know, for Bob Brooks. And I actually went to Harley's widow, Judy, and asked permission if I could run that name as a tribute, you know, to Harley. If you notice on the car, it does say, in memory of Harley Griffith. Right. And um, anyway, she... uh, she graciously let me do that, and she was honored that 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 we would do that. And uh, it's been a big hit with the fans ever since. Now we haven't run the car as much as we would have liked to, especially after the, you know, the move from Southern California to Oregon. We right. kind of laid low for a little bit, but we were going to Woodburn up here, and and we tested a lot the last two years. And we, hopefully we got all of our stuff together a little better so we can be a little more competitive and, and put on a good show. So that's why you're seeing us show up a little more at some of these venues now. Right. I mean, the car's beautiful. The car is definitely a beautiful car. I, lo- I love the whole scheme on the car. And uh, I got to chat with Kenny here every once in a while. So you, every time I see Kenny, we always talk about some stories, too. So that's a good legendary piece right there with uh, – and I remember the car because I had the T-shirt. I remember having that T-shirt, Evil Wicked Neat. And I remember right. the probes were the kind of the hot cars for funny cars for a few years. That body yep. style was uh, the good ones. I, I, if I, that's right. It was an alcohol. I always thought it was top fuel for some reason. I don't know why. But the alcohol cars, but they, I, they always had cool paint jobs. Go ahead. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm really an old school funny car guy, especially – now that we're into the, the nostalgia thing so it had to be painted it couldn't be vinyl wrapped you right. know what i mean and and back in the day before i got involved when i was when i was such a, a, a big drag racing fan you know kenny youngblood was the guy and, and kenny's worked on several of my cars but i had to make sure that he did the the headlights and the grill and the taillights and and he designed the the lines of the paint you know to fit properly on the mustang body and all of that and uh if you'll if, if you ever come around to the races again you know to my car you'll notice that that like the brake handle and the steering wheel has got the the old school laminated wood grips you know I saw that. On, right? I did see that and and people say to me all the time you know hey how come you don't have those really bitching carbon fiber grips on on all that stuff well obviously they don't get it no. right because back back in the early '70s, you weren't crap if you didn't have the Don Long laminated wood grips on the controls in the cockpit. Well, that's why they're there. It's to pay homage to my heroes, heroes exactly. as I was growing up. You know. Yeah, there's. You, that's why I, I love sh- you know sharing the stories, and I wanted to see what the history was, and I thought it would be cool to have you chat about the car and talk about the the Taylor Motorsports and all the cool stuff that was prior. You know, and just keeping the history going around, you know, just little pieces of history that people might not ever know about what came about. You know, I was just while you were talking about that car, I was thinking, you know, maybe it's time to talk to uh, uh, Dell and, and and his dad and say, hey, maybe bring the Tinker Toy back and put it in a, a nostalgia. Because I remember you said names of cars. I forgot about the Tinker Toy. Remember that was a a, a crazy uh, name on the side of the car. I remember that one. Yeah, that was uh, Chuck Worsham and Art Hindi yep. before Dell started. Before Dell started driving, right. you know. But that yeah. might be a, a nice nostalgia piece. Yeah, you know, all those cars back in the day, they they all had a name, a moniker. You know, very seldom did you see just the owner and driver's name, you know, on the side of the car. Right. There, there were some, but the real popular ones, you know, certainly had a name and an identity, oh, and yeah. that's what we wanted. That that's what definitely needs to stay stay in this, uh, you know, the nostalgia or heritage, as Del, as Dar was telling me a couple of weeks ago, say heritage, but uh, the heritage uh, nostalgia style cars. I I love the I I'm glad I discovered Bakersfield. That's all I got to say is that I'm glad that Dan Haran decided to put us on a race car at one time, and, it, and I discovered that that whole different world of drag racing. That's what I remember growing up like you as a as a kid. So. Jungle Jim, Chi-Town Hustler. You know, we go right down the list. Color Me Gone. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Holy Toledo, The Invader. I mean, we could talk all day about names of cars from all over the country. The Black Magic. Uh-huh. Blue Thunder. You know. I remember, I remember Blue Thunder yep. in the ni- uh, 80s and 90s. Yep. Uh, yeah, so. that's what's cool about this. And, you know, and i got to tell you, you know, people come to Bakersfield that, that maybe have never been there before, but they've heard about it. And, and, and Bakersfield is, you know, Mecca for all things nostalgia, right? Exactly. And people think, people think that that is absolutely hallowed ground going to Famoso and the Bakersfield, you know, race, racetrack. I agree with that. And uh, it really is, you know. I, I agree that once you get on the once you once you get there, I I, I can I, I feel home. That's how I feel. I feel like I've gone through the gates of heaven, man. That's uh, I got Trevor Larkin. He popped in. He popped in the side door here, so I'm gonna bring him on in a few seconds to chat a little bit. But he he knows the same feeling. I'm sure he does about uh, getting on the. Uh, once you go through that, the history of, of Bakersfield is huge. Plus all the stuff that's happening. Uh, Man, I love it. I'm I'm glad I got to you know take take some you know history of what you got what you have done you know and what's the, and all my heroes I get to get to see the up close and personal and hang out with my heroes now you know. And I'll bet if you ask Trevor when you talk to him here in a minute that I'll bet you he was raised. That was one of the places he was raised. Was was uh, you know the right the drag his, strip there with his dad also. used to run, his you know dad hanging out there with his dad right. And I know he still keeps the car around for cackling and, and appearances. So we we chat we chat all the time on all that stuff. But uh, I I just love that you know you guys are all sharing a little bit of your history and what's happening because I I know when we talk about yeah what's it like to feel in a car what's it like this what's it like to been back in the day or where did you come from with the car and what's the history and that's that's one of the things I love sharing about the show and you guys get to tell a little bit of your history in a short you know period of time man. And we'll love to have you come sure, back and do sure. it again. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Just let me know. Yeah, we're still, you know, babbling along for a few. But uh, I appreciate you. I, I scrambled today, and I know I, I, I usually am a little more prepared, so I'm, like, scrambling to get everybody on the show. And I'm, like, regular day job took over from Friday all the way up to uh, actually this morning. So I'm, like, oh, great. I got a show to do tonight. And I'm, like, I told Dennis, and I had Jim on the notes, and I had Jim Kretz on it, who picked up the Joker's Wild uh, Fuel Altered. So he told me today, you picked up, I don't know if you're watching the show or listening in, but uh, he told me today that he picked up Gordy Bonin's old dragster. How cool is that? Oh, wow. That really is cool. I mean. Yeah, you, you know, it's what's funny about, you know, you mentioned those guys, Jungle Jim, Gordy Bonin, Al Segrini, all of those, Tom McEwen, Don Perdome. Scarlet, you know, as a kid growing up, as a fan of this sport, you know, I didn't have any childhood heroes that were baseball players or movie stars or whatever. They were all drag racers, you know. True. And I can remember being a kid at the. At, they didn't have ropes back then, but in their pits, you know, just just to get a glimpse of them or to to speak a few words with them was, you know, really something. But I'm really proud to say that all of those guys that were my heroes. Uh, you know, they're pretty much all friends today. And uh, I can't think of anything that's any better than that right there, you know. That's uh, kind of what I've been preaching for the last six months on this show is that how, how cool is it to be able to get to talk to the heroes that you admired. And I, I got, like I said, at the, what was it, the, the, the reunion, Hot Rod reunion, I went out to Laguna Seca and, and – I remember t- I, I took a minute with Big Daddy because I was in Pomona one year and I told this story on the air a couple of weeks back and said, you know, I waited in line to get his autograph. All my life he was one of my heroes, so I was like, i got to get Big Daddy's autograph. So it was Pomona. It was raining. It was rained out. I was the last guy in line. Somebody grabbed him and walked away. And I'm like, oh, great. So I told him the story. I go, I don't know if I want to ask him for his autograph, you know, because I, I, I don't. But he's, you know, I told him the story. He was kind of laughing, and this girl was saying, you know, you, you can't hear very well. So I think that's probably one of the things that grabbed him and just pulled him, and it was just one of them things. But yeah. he was laughing about it the whole thing. And I was like, I'm glad I took a couple of seconds just to shake his hand and uh, hear, tell him a little story from my perspective. And, uh, you know, I bought the book, and the book's an amazing book. I'm talking about all these cars. So, you know, these guys, like I said, we, we've been blessed. 
to, you know, my dad worked for Jungle Jim, so I got to meet Jungle Jim. So how cool was that back in the day? Yeah, well, listen to this. Garlitz was certainly my hero, uh, dragster-wise, whenever he would come out to the West Coast, right? Right. So I'm probably one of the few guys that left, really, that can say they got to, they got to run alongside Big Daddy. I was 24 years old driving a top fuel dragster and the first time i ran i got to run him there was a match race deal at eight top fuel cars uh, over at firebird raceway in phoenix right phil burgess just just wrote about it recently in his online uh, uh, insider inside the dragster column and uh first round they paired me up with garlic and uh, John Lundberg was doing the announcing that night, and they made a real big deal about the age difference, you know. <laughs> and a lot, let me tell you, backing up from the burnout, kind of looking over and watching him, thinking to myself, oh, my God, this is just, this is more than I can handle. You know, I get to race my hero. This is crazy. And then later in the year, I think it was at the World Finals at Pomona, I got to run him again in qualifying. And uh, that was uh, that was certainly one of the big highlights, you know, of my life at that point. Right. Yeah, that was just awesome. I mean, how cool that that is cool. I mean, it, how many people can even say other than some of the big top dogs that got to run? And I was always in English Town as a kid, so I never got to go into the pit area because you know, a certain age, you weren't allowed to get in the pit area, so I had to stay on the other side. But uh, I remember all those cars like it was yesterday, man. The big summer t <laughs> summertime, you know, the 32 car funny car fields and the big fields that they did. And I just remember all, the the love of all the sport. It was like under the lights at, in the summertime. That was the place to be, you know. All, even the old pro gassers and you know, you, you just miss all that stuff. You forget how cool it was, you know. Now we've got a chance to live it again one more time before the history's over, you know. So we got to keep it going. Yeah, uh, and I got to meet Jungle Jim as well when I worked for uh, Jim Green, and we were on tour with the Green Elephant. We pitted right next to him at uh, Columbus, Ohio, in 1977, and he was he was special. There, it, it would have really been interesting to see where he would have wound up today. And you know, Austin Coyle and I have talked about that at different times, right. you know, over the years. You know, would he still be driving? Would he be one of the best tuners, you know, kind of like Austin was and right. what have you? And would he have kept pace with the corporate change and all of that? And I really think he would have, you know. Right. But he was uh, he was special. He was a very, very smart individual. And what, what really gets you about Jungle, you know, he was only 32 when he passed away. He packed, he packed 60 years of life into oh, yeah. a very short time. And, and you talk about you Austin, know. you know, you talk about Austin. I go, how cool is that? I got to meet Austin through uh, the Dan Horan deal with Ronnie Swearingen, and uh, I got to be pretty good buddies with uh, him and Lisa. So we still keep in contact, and we still email each other almost on a daily uh, type of deal. So it's, it's hey, good to hear me, from him. Go ahead. Let me give you another quick little fun, fun fact. You mentioned Ronnie Swearingen. So when I was on tour with the Green Elephant, I was 19 years old, and there was this kid who was about my same age. I don't know if Ronnie's, you know, uh, he's got to be right around my age. Right. There was this kid who worked for Billy Meyer, and he was just a kid on the road for the first time, and that was Ronnie Swearing. Wow. I, didn't, I, I'm, I, I told him I want to get him on the show. Back. I sent him a note this morning, too. I sent him, Ronnie, come on, be on the show. And... Uh, He's like, ah, some other time. But I know he's got a lot of history, and I remembered his history with uh, uh, Casey Spurlock, the first time out of the box, winning uh, from 16 qualifier all the way up to number one and winning the whole race at the Winter National. So I remember that and Melanie. And so I was excited to know that I was going to hang out with them guys and then uh, went to Austin's house for the Super Bowl that one year, and he said, bring a guitar. And he goes, oh, he could play. And then Austin saw us playing at the March meet. He goes, you got to be one of the best live guitar players I've seen. I go, you can't tell me this because you're my hero. I can't, you, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not worthy. I'm in presence of, you know, one of the greatest tuners that's probably been on the planet as well. And there's a lot of great of them. Hey, so just go ahead. Just remember, though, when you, get to, when you get to meet these guys, you know, they're just regular guys. Guys, too, exactly. You know, they, they've, got, they've got interests 
outside of racing, whether it's concerts and rock stars and sports heroes and all of that, you know, as well. Right. And uh, it's interesting once you get to get to know some of these guys and, you know, really, really know what they're into, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Austin told me some stories that obviously will never hit the air, but he told me when he came on the show a few a few months back, he goes, I'm going to piss everybody off because I'm not in the business anymore. I mean, he just said some great stories and. It's always good to hear, you know, those guys' points of view and, uh, you know, sharing this. Like you said, we're sharing stories of, of racers that have been part of our lives or what we thought was cool along our pathway. So, and when, like you said, when you meet them, we're just guys. That's why I tell people when they see me, I was like, oh, I want your autograph. Dude, I just, I just play a guitar. I'm lucky. I'm blessed to share the gift that I have. And that's all I got to tell you. Other than that, I work a day job, so I got to do whatever whatever I can to make you happy at the end of the day. And if you like what I do, God bless you. I did something good, you know. I tell people uh, I'm only here for a short while, so I'm on a time limit right now. I tell them, you know what, we got to make it count and leave something behind that was good for everybody. Yeah, like old, like my old buddy Bobby Baldwin used to say, we're not here for a long time. We're here for a good time. Yeah, that's true. You know, we'll also get in. Get in. I'm going to... I'm sitting. I'm sitting with Mr. Trevor. So, I'm gonna. You got any questions for Mr. Dennis Taylor, Mr. Mr. Larkin? Uh, the Dennis Taylor? Yeah, the Dennis Taylor. Not <laughs> not just a Dennis Taylor. We got uh, the. You're Dennis. so full of it, Trevor. My headphones. Are he, stuck his his headphones are stuck on me, so he can't hear you. So it's good. You could say anything you want about <laughs> Trev right now, and he can go back and listen to it on the air later. What happened? Look at these headphones. Don't worry about it. Just wear them. Do you steal these from the elementary school down the street? Hey, <laughs> really? You're gonna, you're gonna be, get the hell off my stage. <laughs> get the hell out of here. You know what? I love you, bro. Hey, hey, pull it. Turn them off. Turn them <laughs> off. I want them out of here. I want to eject this Larkin kid out of here. Dennis, tell him to get off my stage. Oh my gosh. Hi, Dennis. <laughs> You hey, get you to make see a great first impression with him. Good job. Yeah, right. Well, oh, he's been here before. Yeah. He's been here before, you know, so he gets he gets a comeback. Uh, I don't know how, how it had happened, but I want to show him that picture right there. Yeah. See that Gringo Gardeners? That's what you're going to be working for me oh. in Mexico. <laughs> I got Gringo Gardeners for life. That means you cut grass in Mexico. White guys cut grass in Mexico. That's, that's my opposite. first. Cool. GringoGardeners.com. Anyway, that's that was my cheap prick uh, uh, spiel for the night. All right. Say hi, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hey, Trevor. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? How's the weather up north there? You know, you won't believe it, but I'm sitting out on the patio. It's a beautiful evening. The sun's just starting to try to set. I'm sitting up here on the patio overlooking my lake. <laughs> it ain't setting yet. It, it couldn't a... be a better place to talk with you guys, you know? I'm glad I'm glad somebody's in a beautiful place. I'm in a dark room with Trevor. <laughs> Hey, listen. Probably got no windows. And listen. No yeah, well, there the is windows no are, windows. The windows are all padded up. That's why we got this. See that beautiful screen behind us? That this. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> stop it. Stop the laugh track now. <laughs> but yeah, there's no there's no uh, windows right now. I'm in a dark. Oh my god. Hey, I got a question for Trevor though. Go ahead. Sure. You you got any really cool, interesting projects you're working on? Uh, I had. J- about a m- three weeks ago, I did the Jurassic Park premiere, like the red carpet premiere, and did all that stuff. It was kind of like a last-minute thing, and my name got thrown in the hat, and they got rid of a guy, and I replaced him, and I hit it out of the park, so to say, and they offered me another job, but I, I can't take it because I work in television, and I'm back on my show now called Superstore. It's on Thursday nights on NBC. Um, it stars America yeah. Ferreira. It's 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 a fun show. We have we shoot at Universal Studios. If anyone ever comes down to Universal, you know, say hey, you know, message me and I'll come out and sit, wave at the tram or something. But <laughs> the tram goes literally right by our stage, <laughs> literally right by You're our. You're good stage. out and wa- wave at a tram. Yeah. Like you mean? <laughs> like hi, there's like right as you get through the shark exhibit there. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Jaws the, from 1982. I was just over there. Yeah. The other when you go by Jaws, yeah, wave to Trevor. Yeah, everybody. wave to Trevor. That's right. He's in. He's inside the Jaws right now. <laughs> you know it's going to go downhill now. I got Trevor on the show. You know? Ooh. Oh. I'm going to smack him Chris. with the damn side effects. <laughs> you know, Chris is in another room. That's what he gets to play that game with us. So he put me out in the, in the studio now. So this is <laughs> so how it's that going. Way you don't backhand me. I, I was literally just, <laughs> just driving home, and I was listening to you guys, and I was like, you know what? I'm passing right by there. Let's go and harass these so, guys. Let's no, let's just show. want to say hi. 
but uh, you know, Dennis, I'm I'm st I'm stoked that you took a few minutes, man. It's a really an honor to have you come on the show and, and oh. chat and chat some crazy stuff with us. What did you do? Well, and like I, I said, any 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 time, any time, just himself. let me know, and uh, we've got plenty of stories. Well, we're definitely going to do it again for sure. And uh, thanks, thank thank you so much for taking a few minutes and uh, okay. coming on the show, my brother. You are welcome. <clears throat> Can't wait to see you uh, see you and your screaming guitar at the at the next next spring you gonna be at spokane uh i won't be at spokane that that i'm stuttering now <laughs> i won't be at and uh, damn it speak english uh my english is not good right now dennis i don't know what happened so uh, where are we gonna sit where are we gonna see you probably at? the next time you'll see me he's is, playing the chuck e cheese up here locally, oh yeah chuck e cheese you... hell uh i'll be playing uh maybe <laughs> maybe uh the Mar uh reunion maybe what <laughs> the reunion <laughs> this guy oh. these guys are just become it just it's just become a clown moment i was i was all serious about everything for about 10 minutes <laughs> and now it's just a clown moment well, chuck e cheese i'll uh, i'll let the, i'll let a little bit of the cat out of the bag right now if it uh justin and i are actually discussing it today and we are going to make plans to bring the evil wicked mean and nasty to the hot rod reunion this year oh, yeah we will nice. be there that's going to be cool I, I love the car man i i think the car's great and I, I I love the shirt, man, and thank you so much. Uh, is that a is that a nitro car? It is a nitro yeah. car. Nice. Yes, it is. Very cool. That car's badass. I, I was just asking to make sure I'm not going up against you. That was the 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 purpose <laughs> of that question. <laughs> well, I don't I don't drive anymore, Trevor. My kid drives it now. Oh, so, cool. Uh, you missed your chance to go up against me, I guess. I uh, I did. You know what's cool is being at the track. I don't know if you guys have maybe already talked about this, but being at the track and everyone that is the, the racers of yesteryear are getting back in the cars just to do this nostalgia world, and it's becoming it's becoming such a it's becoming such a big thing that uh, it's cool because we take it for granted. And here, these people are living legends walking amongst you and, and hanging out, and and you're shaking your head. You just talking about this. I'm, just, I'm <laughs> I'm in, in a daze every time I go on the line and I see, you know, saw Roland there. And there's Roland Leong. I'm like, Mr. Hawaiian, how cool is this? You see Don Perdomo. You see, used to see, rest in peace, the Mongoose. Used to see him in Randy's uh, T-shirt booth over there right yep. next to him all the time. I mean, it was just like, I talked to the Goose before in Pomona and I was <laughs> talking to him about getting him on the show. And he said, yeah, give me a call. You know, I just stalled too long. And I, if I would have known what i known, now, if somebody's a legend, I'm calling them the next day you're going to be on the show. I, I hate that every time someone passes, I think of this. I need to get with someone, and either I do it or I put it in NHRA's pocket. Um, we need to sit down with these racers that are the the, legends. the living legends that, and just let them, tell, let them tell stories. Let them tell stuff that, I you know, the, half the fun was hearing the stories of, of you know, what people did in, in the 60s, 60s and 70s, 70s and stuff to, to – uh, mm -hmm make it to the next round some guys borrowed complete engines and then they did this and that like i used to love hearing those stories with my dad and it was cool to to um have that and i think nhra has sitting on a gold mine that they not nhra shoot it's actually gonna be fox sports or whoever's doing it now yeah the, the media part of it to maybe it's a lewis bloom thing you know the guy that does the stats it's and the historians he's, he's a to, true to, historian, to go back and, and say hey now we're sitting down with chris caramacinus now we're sitting down with uh you know all these different people that that have these the the stories that would be so cool and they can make it like a youtube thing or they do it like a episode we can do it here when it we can, that's uh, why yeah. i keep looking for i go we can maybe we can have dennis on. say hey dennis do we uh come on and, and sponsor a show with us and with the we'll make a legend show hi brian hi kevin hi kev well you you know uh guys you know uh, it was really was the mongoose that that uh was really pushed in HRA for this Legends Tour that's going on right now. You know, I mean, he and I have had talks about that as well, that, you know, he, in fact, the last conversation he and I had, he told me, he says, you know, I'm so afraid to answer my phone anymore. We're losing these guys just all the time. I know. But I know he really pushed in HRA because of the fact that we're losing people so much, you know. You guys are sitting on a on a piece of history here that you got to you got to get it. you got to get it now. Well, I... And, uh, Go ahead. To not have Mongoose at the 40th anniversary, you know, of Indy this year, he was really looking forward to that, and uh, it's just not going to be the same, you know, obviously without him. 
Well, I saw a lot of guys uh, were listening to the show and they were posting up. They were very emotional about the uh, uh, memorial for him. But the thing is, is that somebody hit me up a couple of months back. These guys are serious film guys. They wanted to get somebody to start doing the history of all these racing things. But everybody's told me, well, they've been documented before. I don't feel that nobody's really documented something. They hit that movie, The Mongoose, probably was probably one of the, the movies that hit to more younger people than it would have just us racing fans that they got a chance to see something that was history, that you grew up, you knew Hot Wheels, and that's what right. I think helped it. But this is why I keep trying to push this show up and trying to pass <laughs> it on and try to get more – uh, youth involved and get more of the guys in history. That's why we had the Stone Age man on for a while. And I, I know George, as he pops in and out, and, he, you know, we, we used to have a lot of fun with George. And he, he didn't feel like he had enough to share, but he is a wealth of history. And just like, you know, the, you guys have history with all the guys prior. Uh, Donnie Couch has all that kind of, yeah. you know. I didn't know Pat Galvin had all that kind of stuff. And even uh, Dave Glass. I mean, these guys, I see them all the time. I did not know any of the history until – just the last six months or so. I don't know. You might know this. The the Hot Rod reunion was going to happen one time back right. in yep. 90 or 91, whatever yep. year that was. And we went to the – it used to be the Red Lion. It right. wasn't the Double Tree yet. Right. It was a Red Lion. And there was – it wasn't the huge turnout that there is Today. nowadays. You know, they barely had enough to run a race, you know, right. call it a race. What was cool, it was seeing – I mean, I was 10, 11 years old, but – hearing the stories and watching all these old racers walk up and say, hey, so-and-so, you ain't dead yet? Like, the, the fun, the, the, the... Right, those guys would break each other's the way they would be. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly, that was fun to me. I'm going, oh my gosh, this is getting fun. And I, and I was, even at a young age, knowing that this is cool stuff, you know? Right, and these guys would always be clowning around doing stupid things or, you know. And I, I got a chance to chat with Ace, and, and one of the cool things when I was... What happened? What did, what did we put on your head? <laughs> well, I guess yeah, that pay, was a PayPal. Uh, PayPal thing, yeah. <laughs> but one of the cool things I was talking to Ace about, and then I, before I got him on the show, I go, I got to get one of the shirts that Cap's got. And he's, the, you know, the, oh, the one where he's, where he's punching up, Flash up, Gordon. Up, yeah. Gordon Minio. Yeah. And I go, he was kind of laughing. He was kind of like, eh, talk to Caps. He made him. <laughs> Ace, hey, listen, let me tell you, from, a, from you know, being living it back in the 70s, right, you can't believe that today Ed McCullough had that reputation, you know, as, as, as a fighter and a badass. You know, if, if, if back in the day you flipped for lane choice, Trevor, right. you'll remember this. You, you know, your lane choice wasn't assigned. You flipped a coin for it. I mean, if Ace said he wanted the right lane and you won the toss, you probably ought to better let him have it. <laughs> you know, Connie Coletta, Connie Coletta was the same way. You uh -huh. know? I mean, he was the those two guys were the two baddest ass guys there were, and you just didn't screw around with those guys at all. Right. You know, but to watch them today and to talk with them today, you know, you'd think that how could this possibly be? Those are the two sweetest guys in track racing. You know, especially McCullough. He's mellowed so much over the years. You know. <laughs> that, but that's that, that, that those stories are true. Oh, I know. I know they're true. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure. I don't want him to come and kick my ass because if I say Bucky, I know Bucky. <laughs> Bucky, you had that reputation. And I know I seen I seen a couple of guys saying, "Hey, can you send a message to Bucky?" When I was walking around Seattle one time in the last couple of, a year ago, and I'm like, "Why do I got to do this? I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tell him." And I remember the song from Foreigner, that song Head Knocker. Remember the song? Well, it's before your time, Trev. You're just a kid. Thanks. I got that yeah, going yeah, for Thank me. you. <laughs> anyway, if any of you guys remember the song, Head Knocker, he's got a 57 coupe, walks with the stoops, wears James Dean is and Dan. That was the line. He's a real head knocker. That's what I, that's what I think of Bucky now every time I think of that because I, I know his reputation was like that. So there's a lot of guys that were just, let's go, you know? But it's but it's not hey, don't like for, that. Don't forget – don't forget Bucky's nickname now, right? I didn't – you could probably say it, and I, he'll probably come and beat me now. <laughs> no, he had it. He, hey, I can say it because he had it on the car. He's the Northwest hitter. Not, oh yeah, Northwest and hitter. It, and and underneath the Northwest was hitter a pair was of boxing, pair of boxing gloves. gloves. Yep. I didn't. I didn't. It didn't hit me till like right now. You think I would remember? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen the car a million times. You know, it was like the, they were the terrors of alcohol back then. The Austins, they definitely were. If you had a car in that time, right, you were just like. Anytime you had an Austin in the in the, tr it was like a, 
really? Can I can I get a chance well, to get yeah. second? Right? Or third? Yeah, you know, you had to, you had to race any of that Austin clan. You know, Pat and his dad, Walt, or uh -huh. uh, Uncle Bucky. I mean, certainly Uncle Bucky and, and I have had our battles in Alcohol Funny Car, and they were fun. Well, they I got, were fun. I got to visit the shop, and I saw all them wallies up on the wall. I go, well, I know those weren't just uh, <laughs> taken away from somebody. So I know he, he definitely beat, <laughs> beat, beat, beat people for those uh, wallies, and he's got a lot of history. And Thank one you, of the Jim. things, yeah, you know, like, okay, what did he say? <laughs> Stop playing with your phone, My, Trevor. I was, oh. I was sharing that we're here. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting great. called out by a friend who doesn't live in the area. <laughs> well, that's what you get. Don't go on the air and play with your phone. I do it. <laughs> anyway, I know. It's just like I, I keep babbling on. But, Dennis, thank you so much for being part of my show tonight, brother. I really appreciate you, man. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, like Thanks. I said, anytime, Joe, just, just call or Facebook me or whatever. And we'll do our best to make it happen. You got it, my brother. Thanks for spending some time again and sharing the history of what you guys have done and some of the stories that you have uh, grew up with and, and got to share. So this is part of the history. That's why I love sharing these uh, stories with you guys. So, like I said, it's never a really a, oh, let's have a million questions. Uh, what's your favorite color, Dennis? <laughs> Do you like uh, Spam or hot dogs? <laughs> Boxers you know. or briefs. That's right. Loofahs or soft soap? You know, we <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We, you know what? I don't. I don't want to bag on my buddy, but uh, this is some of the questions that he's asked some people. So I know now we got to get yeah, him back okay. on. You're, you're going to have to have me back to have those questions. No, no, we right? will, we'll have you back, but we won't ask those questions. <laughs> Everybody, give Big Dennis Taylor a big round of applause for coming on DT Mo. You can check him out. You can check out all his products on, on TaylorMotorsports.com. Check them out at Evil, Wicked, Mean, and Nasty when the car comes to your town as well. Dennis, much love, brother, and thanks for all thanks for all what you do, man. Thanks, Dennis. Did you cut Did you cut him off, Chris? No, he's still there. All right, just want to make sure. Dennis, thanks a lot. Hey, you're welcome. Bro. Thank you. I, <laughs> I thought he cut you off. I'm like, I was going to go over in the room and beat him myself. I was going to do a, I was going to do a Bucky and Ace and uh, Connie all at once. All you hear is a bunch of pans. That's right. We'll crashing. do it. But much love, man. Thank you so much, Dennis. It meant a lot for that, to have you're, you on the show, brother. You're welcome. You, you, you kids behave yourself tonight, all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're just about done. I'm, I'm going to take a couple of phone calls with Trevor and see what kind of uh, action we can get out of this. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right, guys. Hold on. Hey, 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 right, hey, guys, hey, 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 hey! It's not a phone sex. It's not one eight hundred Joey. This is Joe time. It's Joe time. <laughs> Remember that show Love Line back in the nineties? Uh, yeah, but we're not doing Love Line. Okay. It's, drag it's rocking and racing. All right, Dennis Taylor, man. Thank you so much. You know the show is going to go downhill once you walk through the door, Trev. Absolutely not. Chris, what are your numbers right now? <laughs> All right. He, yeah, he give us hung a, up hey, now. Give us a call on a free phone. <laughs> 818. No, yes. 661-249-9444. 661-249-9444. Six, 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 one, Hey, thanks to all our sponsors again. We really do appreciate them. A pure hot for being part of the show tonight and staying with us. Uh, Bucky's uh, Bucky Austin Racing and Bucky's Motorsports and Bucky's uh, Repair Shops. Uh, Nitro Mafia Apparel dot com. Go check oh, yeah. out. You know check they got out. the new Lisa Kubo shirt that says Consigliere oh, yeah. on it, which is cool. I I can't wait to get mine, so that'll be cool. It and, doesn't come uh, with Lisa though. <laughs> <laughs> you know Gary might be listening. That's Gary's Gary's uh, Lisa's husband, so you already know. Yeah, you so see, if it you, did come with wait, Lisa, wait, it would wait, come with him, wait, too. You know, wait a second. Let me do this for a minute. You know, Lisa's got like that. You know, she's got the guns. And Gary's got the big guns. He's got these guns. So don't talk about Lisa. You're going to get these guns. Okay, kid? Calm down. You want a fresh one? You want a fresh one? I saw one Don Bobby was on. So maybe Don Bobby might want to call and straighten you out. Once you get straightened out, maybe you might get made for the, for the club. <laughs> Check them out at their website. <laughs> Give us a call. We're hanging out. We're talk to Trevor, movie star. Oh, I'm not. Hey, stop playing with your phone. Just I, I stop playing with your phone. Your 
Hang on a minute, I got a call. Don't cry, Trevor. Oh, I love it. Oh I love my it. gosh. I, what's funny hey, is, Bob. What about Bob? Bob, Bob gave see. a thumbs up. Jennifer. There you go. Don't cry, Jennifer Trevor. Jennifer doesn't even live here. That's what was funny. I was talking on the way over here, listening to you guys. Well, and I said, I got to go. I got to stop by somewhere real quick and do a radio thing. See, now she knows. Now, she's like, yeah, yeah. now she knows what you're doing. So what are you doing these days? Drag racing? Yeah, I know you're a movie star now. And you I, got went the and TV did, show. I went and did, uh, I've been driving that Altered. Right. Um, for Dick Mosley. We're right. testing next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend in Fontana. Um, yeah, just doing that. And uh, Ron Anderson, we, he has a super comp car that we're taking out and he, Finally. He, he got his license, and Finally. we're, we're uh, playing with that thing. That's kind of fun. Maybe we got to get him over here. You're so loud. I always uh, am loud, dude. That's the way no, I No, the roll. music in the background is so loud. Yeah, but he always does that. He does. He, he, oh. he likes me to not hear anything, so it's okay. Oh, gotcha. Because he's talking <laughs> bad things to those people. And he's got he's got a 1-800 mind back there. He's talking trash to some of the women that call oh, yeah, you know. That's cool. So anyway, yeah, come, you should come out to a testing tune. Check it out. The thing is, is like, when am I ever home these days? That's the problem. I know. I know. You call me and it's like, hey, we're going to Tucson. Can't plan. Yeah. Where am I going? Let's see. I'm going to be in Sonoma next weekend, so you know that won't work. Oh. I'll be going up there, and then I come back. I'm home on weekend. Then I'm going to Monterey. I'm taking my girl for a birthday. She doesn't know yet. It's a secret. Oh, oh she's not watching. <laughs> she never watches the show, right? <laughs> she never watches the You know what? This show. is going to be the one night she watches. And <laughs> no, she like, watches. Damn it. So she she's already on. She's already, she already on. Knows. She's already commented. I know. She already knows. Oh, know. how funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so I was going to ask you, you know, down, the, down at Sand Canyon, there's somebody building some crazy shit back there. What is that? You, is that part of a movie set back there? Oh, um. Placerita and the 14 there? Way back down there on sand, all the way where it ends. So my brother's doing the Sons of Anarchy spinoff called the Mayans. And that's they're doing a lot of stuff over there and over here. In but there's like some big monolith of a building. If you go down Sand Canyon down there at the very end where it starts to curve into the uh -huh. mountain, it looks like some sort of crazy set they're building. I thought maybe you might know uh, what that, that is. Used, that was Wipeout, that, that show Future. where people do all the... It was called Wipeout. They do like... Obstacle course stuff and ah, that did, could be it. I think that's what they were doing. But I know they've been doing the Mayans all around here because everyone keeps asking me what's going on. I'm like, I'm not even doing that show. But I did, I did Suns for four seasons of the of the seven. So I think my boy Ned was supposed to be one of the Utah chapter guys. So oh, nice. I never saw him. He goes, I'm on the show, and I'm like, I watched the last two seasons of Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> I said I wouldn't really watch it, and guess what? I got hooked to it. It's a male soap opera. It, hey, yeah, you know what like, we forgot it, tonight? Phil! <laughs> we never forget Phil. We still got time. Nobody's called yet. We've got Trevor here. As soon as Trevor falls asleep, then we'll call it, call it a day. <laughs> Phil, it's, almost, uh, it's almost his bedtime. Is it Phil Hoffman? Yeah, Phil Hoffman. Oh, yes. Nice. We got the Phil report From the East Coast. coming at you. Let me load up the Phil report. We're loading up the Phil report. All right, here you go. All right. Phil All right. Hoffman, NHRA Phil. All right, we got a caller. We got a caller. All right, let's oh. take the caller first, and we'll bring on Phil. You're live. Oh, you're on Pete. Hey, guys. What's happening? Who we got? Hey, this is Brian and Nitro Kevin. <laughs> oh, what's up, guys? What's Hoffman. happening? We like the brown Nitro oh. Cruise and watching you guys. Watching this guy, not, not this no. guy. Hey, oh, we no. hey. <laughs> What's happening, brother? I hope you guys are well. It's always great to see you, Trevor. You too, man. How are you guys? How's uh, how's Tucson or Phoenix, wherever you're at? One hot hole. Well, we're in Tucson. It's uh, actually the last few hot weeks have been kind of nice. It's been raining and nice and uh, cool. So I thought you guys this last. It isn't 110. I, I thought you this last week and I was in Havasu and it was hot in Havasu. I can imagine how hot it's gonna be down there. <laughs> yeah. Well. Go to Yuma. Havasu's yeah. hotter than we are. Yeah, Havasu's definitely so, hot. Yuma's even hotter. So are you planning on coming to Tucson? Yeah, we just we got a new block for the the back in black car. Um, we're just going through some uh, changes on the engine. It's it's a it's a new billet block. It's got different uh, rods, lengths, and stuff. So we we've got to get a lot of extra other parts that we weren't planning on. So it just takes time and money, man. Drag racing is for people who uh, love that's to go fast and hate money. <laughs> that's me. I, that's why I probably haven't got into it yet. Yeah. I I fully get that, but just let me know when you're going to be here, because we'll... Uh, absolutely. We'll I, I will absolutely let you know when I'm going to be there. 
And I got some, um, hopefully got some new shirts come out again. I, I blew through all the shirts. So I, I found this guy in Vegas. Uh, it's uh, 6B Apparel. Really good stuff. So I've been uh, using him for my shirts. His name right. is Chris Bozen. And uh, I'm up. I'm due for another batch coming up here soon. So 2X. Two, <laughs> exactly. 2X. I, so medium. I went, 2X. I went to medium. Medium over oh. here. You know, it's got to cost you something to sit in that chair, dude. <laughs> you don't just get free, like, free air time. Who wears a medium? And that air conditioning is expensive on you. That's yeah, right. And, that, you're, and you're these cooling. lights are pretty hot. I see you're cooling the room down to 85. That's what's going on. Or 70, 73. 73. 73. I looked you at turn it that AC off, it'll get 95. I'm sure it will. So what's doing with you guys? Are you guys out uh, where, where are you guys going to appear yourself at next? Mr. Uh, Kevin? Well, we're not doing a whole lot until September, and in September, <clears throat> we plan on going to Bisbee for a big car show on the on the 30th and the 1st of September, and then after we get home from that, the next week, we're going to go to Little Rock and see my daughter, and on the way back, we're going to go to Denton for the Funny Car Chaos, try and hang out with John Hale for a little bit. That's a good guy to hang out with. Then when we get back from that, the following week, we're going to go up to Phoenix for the Hot Wheels deal and try and make Kevin's car a Hot Wheel. Oh, nice. cool. Nice. That'd be cool. You guys coming out to the reunion? We don't go nowhere till the reunion. There you go. That's almost enough time to take a few days out. Keep you busy. Did you guys yeah. ever you guys ever start anything on your uh, YouTube channel yet? Have you guys got any ideas of that get launching any? Um just I'm really haven't yeah I have done a couple things but i haven't really Grab them and posted hold them. anything so just gotta have the time to to post it and try and figure it out because every time i try and post it i don't know how to put the tags in it and all that other stuff so still trying to figure all that out so we'll get that up and running hopefully soon we're doing a couple improvements to kevin's car it's down right now we don't know what's wrong with it but We'll get it fixed, and then we're going to add a couple things and try and make it look a little cooler. Cool. Well, that's good. Jeez. I see that everybody's picking on Trevor on the, uh, yeah, the God. Hollywood <laughs> Trevor. Yeah, it must be the shirt, dude. You, you come in with your shirt and showing oh, up your on. guns. You know, I am not. You I, think my I tracker is sexy. I don't wear you a lot of Trevor. I don't wear a lot of sleeves. That's not a, not a new. Yeah, because uh, that's my job. I let me pump you up. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You know what it is? I'm trying to keep up with Mike Halstead. We took a picture with people one time. It was like this. And I was like, oh, my God, my arms look little. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Mike might be on the line. Did you grab whoever was on the line as well? No, I All missed right. it. If they, if they call in, just grab, just grab them and hold them. You know, just say, hey, we're going to get in. Grab them and we'll hold them. Oh, yeah. But... That's cool. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing good. I appreciate you guys uh, <laughs> hollering in, man. It's always good to hear from you guys. Yeah, it's always great. Great to see you guys. Great to talk to you. Uh, it's always good to see what's happening in the world, and you do such a great job, Joe. <laughs> uh, I, I got to keep up with Hollywood, Hollywood Larkin. Hey, man. <laughs> Hollywood yeah. Larkin. I like to do stuff and be a, be a uh, lead by example. I All right, well, you know, flattery's the best example of uh, I'm trying to be like Trev. Hang on take a minute, folks. Wait a it. second. It. Boom. Wait a minute. For... <laughs> oh, there we go. So, when is, uh, it's a whole when new is Hollywood show. Trevor going to be doing a movie? Oh, yeah. What was that one? I feel like the guy from, uh, what the hell is that movie? What the hell is that TV show? OCC. Casper? No, yeah, oh. I'm a friendly ghost, but I, now I feel like, you know, I peep my arms like this. I can feel like. Oh, yeah, you look like. Uh, what the hell's his name? Tuttle. Paul, uh, Paul the Tuttle. Big, the big Tuttle. The oh. mean one. The dad. Awesome. Be like this. Yeah, exactly. Well, Trevor, you, you've done a lot of cool things. Oh, well, thank you. I, I, I love to do that kind of stuff. And I, I not to get all um, emotional about it. I used to watch my dad do that kind of stuff. I watched my dad give the hat off his head to a little kid this when he is said what you he got hey, to do. Hats. You know it's, that. it's I know it. I you know, I try to do what other people, you know, um, used to tell me in my Hello? My dad did. Oh, look out. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I think I I put uh 
All right. Hold on one second. Hello, Joe. Don't go nowhere. Baby, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Will you, we'll say goodnight to Mr. Kevin politely. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Don't go nowhere because I don't want to cut Kevin off and just say, here, Kev, I got to take this call because you can hear my girls on the line now. You know it's going to get bad. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we're just, I thought I lost you, so. No problem, my brother. Thanks for calling in. I got to, I got to, I got to hear my girl here. She's going to beat me up a little bit. But she might be looking at Trev. Bye, Brian. Bye, Kev. Bye, Kev. Um, bye. You got it. Hello, you still there? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what did we lose her? I think so. Oh really? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hello? Watch Trev and keep the arms. Eating your live on Radio Buzz with Joe Walla. Hello? Joe? Yes? Did you hang up on me? No, 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 no. That was my no, bad. No, no, I'm no. sorry. I'm that's, sorry. That's Chris. He got all excited when he heard I got your all voice. excited. I think he was sporting a oh, Woody. I just wanted to say that uh, you really turned my avocados to guacamole tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the I Paul Tuttle you. hour. Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Uh, it's... Trevor, um, a uh, guy, uh, uh, I have a question. Is he going to do that? I've seen him before. Uh, is he going to do that um, calendar for the firemen of West Hollywood again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's asking for me. I, I don't want to interrupt your show. No, no, I love you're, you. No, no, you Please can have stay my on. baby soon. Thank you. Please have your baby <laughs> soon. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't go nowhere. Don't Who go nowhere. Who is that? Did she leave? No, she's still oh there. My gosh, that's honey. Awesome. Honey. Yes? Trevor is not going to do that that <laughs> calendar this year. He, he usually does it, but this year, look, if you're looking at us live, look at us. We're pumped up. We're, I'm so I sorry. I, I love this. that red Speedo oh. that he wears with a thong back. You stop. <laughs> I thought you loved me. You, you have the old calendar. Well, I, I do, but, you know, sometimes you just get upstage, Joe. I don't know oh. what to say. Oh, 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 oh. You have to you're not gonna let him, I'm not going to be here anymore. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, he's leaving. <laughs> oh, you My made goodness. him leave. My goodness, he's it's crying into his patched pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that he has a big, a big career ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not talking about the, in the adult world either. Oh. No, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> oh well, I hope you're doing well. I, I, I'll try to I'll try to send you that sample that you've been asking for for the last couple of weeks. So look for it in the mail. It should be coming. You could be able to use that, and, and that'll help well, you. I that'll help you with that it system. I right now because I'm on a no salt diet. Oh, <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Well, thanks for calling in tonight, you crazy chick. And uh, I oh, love you. Oh I love you too, baby. And Trevor, yes. Please do the the next calendar. <laughs> You look so good with a bull whip and like that a, little like a chips motorcycle dance. hat. I think he needs to have that neoprene <laughs> suit on that he always has on. Is that what you're thinking about, that neoprene? Mm. <laughs> Trying to throw a wetsuit? I suit? don't remember, <laughs> but all I remember is he was Mr. July. Mr. July. It was August. Yes, he <laughs> talked to something about a bottle rocket, but I, I don't remember now, so. <laughs> <laughs> something about... Something about a big explosion in three seconds. I just don't oh, remember. Oh, wow, that's just calendar. sad. This is definitely taking rocket and wow, racing to a went, new. Uh, it's just we're just rocking it, baby. Hey. This is rocket and racing nights. This nice. is the HBO. That's program. right. This is the uh, R Well, if I could have twins, I would name them Joe and Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you. We love you too. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know what? I, t I, was, I told you before Bye. you leave, I told you I went to, this, to Seattle and I was going to expose you my space needle, but you didn't even call in that night. Oh, I can't wait. She hung up. She hung up. She's out. She's out. This is rocket racing. I know. It's just, what do you do now? How do you top that night? I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> I like to name you Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, this is... It goes from, like, we're talking to Jim Critz about his uh, altered. We talked to Jim Black, and Jim was saying, well, I hope that was good enough. Jim, if you're listening to the show still, you kicked ass. Dennis Taylor, Jim, all you guys kicked ass tonight. Awesome Evan show. Trevor. 
Trevor. That's what, it's the uh, new cologne for I can, women. I can, I can see my new, the new hero cologne. My new hero cards are going to be like this. Trevor with a little <laughs> accent. Trevor Larkin. <laughs> Trevor Larkin. <laughs> So when you see him, I want you to, you guys out there, seriously, when you see him sign an autograph, oh, can you sign Trevor. just exa- Trevor Larkin? I think everyone should cut off their sleeves and bring it to oh. him for autographs. Oh, autograph oh. sleeves. That, you autograph know my cut off Jennifer? sleeves. Oh, my God. It'll go with the wallow wig, dude. The yeah. wig. We could sell it right here. The sleeve, the, right. any, any of the sleeves you cut off, we can you can sign them and I send them just off. Just wear see the, the sleeves. Right now, it'll be so fun. Yeah, That's just right. wear the sleeves. No shirt. No shirt. Do you shirt. want it this to look like this? Sleeves. Do you want to have a body like that? <laughs> you can. Wait, where's the where's, over here? Over there, over there. Over there. The other one. This one. That one. That one. No, the other oh, one. No, this one. No, the other one. That one. Oh my there God, you go. Crazy. It took a while to get there. You can have a body like us. How about the hair, the wallowig, and the Trevor Larkin sleeves? Oh, yeah. All right. We're taking it as far downhill as I think All we right. can get. They, we need to do the Phil report before we All right. Get Phil on. Here. Phil, we love you. I just want to say it now. Oh, here's the, there you go. That's you, that's you, Phil. Here we go. The Phil report for you. All right. Here's the Phil report. Let me load it up. We got to get the dramatic music. And here it is. Selfie. <laughs> We're doing selfies. Oh wait, hold on. Bucks. My bad. Hey, Rotten and Racing fans, this is NHRA. Phil checking in for your weekly update. That's you, NHRA. Left. That's you Phil. Here we go. Phil report for you. Dodge right, Mopar. Mopar. Dodge Mile High. Yeah, NHRA National Kicks and Off Bucks. Is. And national network coverage, high-powered excitement, Selfie. and championship <laughs> drama of the NHRA and all the other drivers. What do I got going on here? Well, again, box <clears throat> on full display. Hey, oh, Rockin' and Racing fans, I'm Billy. All right, Phil, check in for your weekly update. Yeah, you NHRA, you here we go. Phil, report for you. Dodge. Viewers my, my on bad, my Fox bad. National Network, July 22nd, is one of the final eliminations for the Dodge Mile High NHRA Nationals race on to the screen live beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. And that concludes my report for this week, as I said. The Dodge Mopar Nationals in Denver, Colorado, coming up this weekend. I'll check in again next week. Joe, Chris, you guys rock in HRA Phil. Checking out. See you guys. Talk to you soon. Later. You just take us right completely out. Wouldn't you? Holy moly. What the hell is wrong with you, dude? Phil, if you can hear us, kill Chris. I don't think Phil can hear you. That was pre-recorded. No, no. Phil's watching watching. all the time. Right, Trev? All the time. Phil watches. Can you put us back on the screen? Or are you just going to get us on the Phil report? I was just going to leave you on the Phil report. (laughs) Here, Trev, look. Selfie. It's Trevor. 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 (laughs) Trevor. Look, we're doing selfies. We really are. (coughs) Selfie. (laughs) See, the thing is that we got a green screen. Just so you know. So there really is a green screen back there. I love what you've done with these blocks. Exactly. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for listening this week and hanging out with us and all the stupid things that we do in between all the seriousness. Rocking, racing. Next week, I said we got Ron Cook from Thrust coming in. He's going to de- debut the new some new cuts from the new album they have. Uh, Hi, Brianna. Hi, girls. Oh, that's cool. I got some of the people from my TV show watching. Well, that's awesome. what happens when that's you're awesome. a, when you're a superstar. That's awesome. Oh yeah. You know, I, you know, he's just Trevor to me. Oh my gosh. You know, but I never know what he does. I just know he races. So if he's a superstar, I gotta start watching regular TV shows. Maybe you might have your own Trevor Larkin show here at uh, Radio Buzz. Uh... Larkin. Sorry. <laughs> I'll tag it. Let's do it. 
All right. We got to talk to Chris, and you got to just kick up a. What, what's the going rate for a show, Chris? About five thousand dollars? Because you know those guys, movie stars, make uh, millions. Sure yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> that's per minute. Not yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's just to get started. You know. I know. Hey, much love to all our sponsors, man. We really do appreciate you guys for helping us out and get along. You guys out there listening, you guys want to pitch in? I think they, uh, I think that Mr. Chris had posted something up on PayPal to support the station because oh yes, yes, that's one of the new things that he was putting up. If anybody wants to help out and keep us alive on here, because uh, some days it gets a little thin, and then it's like, Chris, are you going to pay the bills? And I'm like, he says no, and I said, are you? And I said, no, <laughs> none of us pay the bills. So we yeah, need, so we if need you can help out. We need sponsors. Yeah, so. if you can help out, go to PayPal.com. Actually, that was PayPal me. Forward slash Radio Buzz. <laughs> Doug says we need Max Headroom for our salt pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. You know, all you guys who always ch- chime in, man, we really do appreciate the comments and the love, man. Trevor. Uh, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor. Uh, he's got it. There it is. Hey, we started something new. I got to tell you something. You guys laugh at this stuff, right? Just think about this. Uh, Nitro Mafia guys. All those guys, Don Bobby. Uh huh. We started it here, Don Bobby, and then we got what do we call uh, the underboss, Scotty, uh-huh. and Consigliere Lisa Kubo. It's on her shirts now. We started all that here when we were talking about it on this show. So Don Bobby, Don Bobby Cusimano, we love you, dude. So Trevor Larkin is going to be the next, and have him sign your sleeves. Your sleeves. Sleeves. It'll go right with the wall The Larkin right. sleeves. Larkin. And the wall wig. That's right. So now we got two products to sell. And Trev, <laughs> Trev pops in whenever, so we'll we never know it. when he's going to do it. Yeah. So I live close by. It works out for me. Well, it works great for us, too, because right it's usually street. right toward the end of the night when I can use an extra little kick into the party. Got and it. And that's right. what we do. And we just take this thing from a real show to, like, a comedy hour. Love it. Thanks Love for it. having me, buddy. Brother Go, it's good, good to see you, you, Trev. Chris, thank you. We're in the back in the other room. Awesome. We'll thank see you guys you. next week. Bye, Rocking and racing right here on RadioBuzz.com and Facebook and YouTube. YouTube. Can we get that a last was, word? Uh, that link to uh, make any uh, contribution. <laughs> that <laughs> shit. <laughs> PayPal me at RadioBuzz. It's PayPal, PayPal me. It's PayPal. dot me. Forward slash we'll radio you. We're buzz. Gonna get ready for funny car racing over there, buddy. Remember? I told you. Stand up. We're going to punch you in the chest. Me and Trev together. You're going to know what it's like to launch. I know what it's like to launch. No, we're going to punch him in the oh, chest. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. He doesn't know yet. He hasn't we got to do that. See you guys soon. All right. Have a good night. Rocking and racing. We rule Rockin the airwaves here at Radio Buzz. We're number one at Radio Buzz. We're the best in the world at Radio Buzz. Hey, any food left over? Trev, can you go get us some whiskey? I know you got cold talk in the truck. <laughs> All right, good night. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Trevor. 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 Lucky. Hey, tonight's show has been brought to you by NitroMafiaRacing.com. Yes, Check them out. NitroMafiaRacing.com. Get your Nitro Mafia apparel. Also, Pure Hot. Save water, get the instant hot water anywhere in your house. Medi Pup. Maybe. <laughs> Medi Pup. Yeah, we'll look into that one. Also, Bucky's Racing tonight has been sponsored by Bucky's Racing. Check them out online at Facebook and on Google. Just search Bucky's search. Racing. Hey, I got to do one last one because you know what? I know Kevin's out there listening. Kevin! Get back on board with us, my brother. Stiff printing. Stiff printing. All Love right. you guys. We're getting out of here. Buenas noches. Hi, mijo. Where are you?